About a year ago, I survived 200 days in Minecraft one block sky block, the world where this one singular block determines the entire fate of both your world and you. After 200 days of living here, I pushed that block to its absolute limit. We made this incredible pyramid base, this massive villager trading hall, we defeated the ender dragon and stole an elytra and so so much more originally i wanted to continue playing on this world and do 300 days but real life kind of got pretty busy but now i am ready to revisit this magical block however we will be doing it in a brand new world and that means i'm putting this world download up on my patreon as one last farewell so if you want to go and play it the link will be down below also let me know down in the comments what some of your favorite moments from this world were i would love to hear them and one last thing don't forget to leave a like and subscribe if you are new to give me good luck in the brand new world that i am recording as we speak because something tells me I am going to need it. Anyways, this is the full movie of 200 days, one block, sky block. Let's get into it. For the first day, I gave in to the block's wishes, and I began non-stop breaking the dirt in wood blocks until I had enough to make my first crafting bench that I then turned into part of my floor. Or some odd reason. And now that I had a crafting bench, I made myself an axe and a shovel so that way I could further submit to the one block's wishes. And my now lord and savior, the block, gifted me with a pig friend that from now on shall be called Hank and he shall sell propane and propane accessories. After meeting my new friend Hank, I continued pounding away at the blocks until I finished the first phase and I was gifted with a second pig friend and a cow that reminded me of Big Mac from my now gone hardcore world. You will be missed Big Mac. After mourning the loss of my cow friend, I was back on to my block breaking rampage. And conveniently enough, I was awarded my first torch that I could use to light up my brand new Pain Domination brand dirt platform. And shortly after getting that torch, I finished the second short phase of blocks, so I did a little bit of a dance to celebrate. I then spent the rest of the night collecting more resources, and pretty soon my pig population kind of became an issue, so I may have Thanos snapped two of them out of existence. And now that the great culling was done, I topped it off by using some of the wood that I had collected to make some fences and I trapped my two cows in a pen for some infinite food sources in the future. That is, assuming that a creeper doesn't spawn from the block and blow them up because they're super close. No foreshadowing. To start off the second day, I struggled to push all of the animals into the cow pen that had spawned throughout the night, and this process was a struggle. I grabbed some seeds from my chest and I lured the chickens into the pen, and I extended the pen to the left side so Sean the sheep here wouldn't yeet himself into the abyss. I then grabbed the ton of dirt that I had in my chest and I extended the back part of the pen, and once again I struggled against my animal overlords until I got all of them into the new area that I had made. And now these boyos were no longer occupying prime creeper explosion real estate. So now that all my animals were safe and sound from everything except for me eating them, I used the two water buckets that I had to make an infinite water source. Then I made a hoe and I planted all of the seeds that I had around it so I could start getting that bread. I must obtain that grain. I spent the rest of the night grinding more resources and I had to fight these two new sheep until they finally got inside of the pen. During this process, these escape artists, pigs and chickens, thought that they were starring in the Over the Hedge movie. But the joke was on all of them because at the end of the day, I was on the outside of the fence and they were on the inside. On day three, I finished another phase and now I had access to stone. That's right, it took until day three to get the stone achievement. Kinda sad. I was living the dream. I collected enough stone to make myself some stone tools and I began collecting some coal and some iron. And now that I was playing 1.17 Minecraft, I could use fortune on all of the iron and cheat the system. But don't tell the block that because I'm scared of him, you might get angry. During this stone grind, the block had a buy one get one free sale on mushrooms. So I pushed them into the pen with absolutely zero issues. There were definitely no chickens that had escaped both times. I continued collecting stone in ores until the first of the surprises smacked me in the face. Two sunproof zombies spawned in to jump me and I spazzed out and broke some of my wheat crops while low-key almost dying. However, I 
did delete them from existence, so things kind of ended up being all good. After that totally fine incident, I went back to collecting some stone until a whole bunch of rabbits spawned, but the first one fell victim to natural selection. So I helped the second one out, smiley face. I then smelted the iron that I had gotten at this point, and I crafted myself a shield before continuing the grind. While mining away at the blocks, multiple gangs of spiders had spawned, except even after I attacked them, they refused to hurt me back. So I guess I'm saying I'm sorry, pacifist spiders. I spent the rest of the night breaking the block until I had enough sheep spawn that I could finally make a bed when it was conveniently already sunrise. On day four, Today was going to be a big day. The first of my spruce saplings had grown into a spruce tree, and I now had access to one of my all-time favorite woods in the game. So I quickly deforested the spruce tree, so I now had spruce wood, and at this point, I was really starting to accumulate a ton of resources. While continuing to smack away at more blocks, a zombie spawned that I quickly took care of, and after that, as I was cleaning out my inventory into my brand new second double chest, I noticed that this man had dropped me a Gucci leather cap. It might not be much drip, but it's drip, am I right? And now that my inventory was clean and I had a brand new hat, later that night I further expanded the side of my platform to make room for the beginning of my spruce tree farm. I cut down some of the trees and I planted as many saplings as I could fit in the area and I went to sleep away the night just in case I was far enough for any mobs to spawn anywhere on the platform. On the fifth day, I spent majority of that day pushing hard through the current block phase because I didn't quite have the right materials to start decorating the center area of my world that contained the block. And during this process, I had another creeper spawn and this guy was acting kinda sus. I guess at this point, anything that isn't hardcore is super easy because I control alt deleted that man like he was an unresponsive computer. And shortly after that, I was greeted by two more zombies who wanted a sample of my premium gamer meat, but I struck them both down the same. I then harvested all of my ready wheat and I expanded my awful looking farm and I was going to use the 10 iron that I had smelted to make armor, but instead I decided to save it just in case. Which was ironic because literal seconds later another creeper spawned in and while I was trying to block I opened a chest by mistake and the guy blew up a hole in my platform while taking half of the chest that had the iron with it. After that little incident was cleaned up, I continued breaking the blocks until I finally finished the current phase, which even gave me a complimentary kinda useless map. Yay. As the sun went down, I began the next phase and a wolf that really wanted to eat all of my sheep spawned, but unfortunately today was not his day because I trapped him in this small little fence area in the hopes that I would get some bones to make him my dog. On day six, I finished another mini phase and now every other block spawned me a new animal that I honestly didn't feel like adding to the pen. So I instead went around ending each and every one of their careers. And while I was at it, I also had the time for some more deforestation to supply me with that never-ending amount of spruce wood that I was definitely going to need for future builds. I spent the rest of the day pounding through more blocks until later that night I finally finished another phase and now it was back to gathering more stone, coal, iron, and hopefully anything that was, you know, better. On day seven, I decided that it was finally time to stop living on a tiny island in the sky. So I grabbed all of my oak wood from the chests and I crafted them into slabs and I built myself a nice little path away from the island that I also added fences to just in case. And at the end of that small platform, I built a brand new dirt platform that I was going to turn into my animal farm because I needed more real estate and these guys weren't paying rent. I crafted myself a whole bunch of fences and I made several different pens for each animal and I placed one of the three grass blocks that I had gotten from the chest in the middle so the grass would begin spreading. And after this, I spent the rest of the night adding more dirt to the platform for two more large animal pens and I walked away for two seconds to get torches and I come back to all of these guys invading my new property. So I rightfully two tapped all of the zombies and I really wanted the bones from the skeleton but he refused to get away from the edge so I did exactly what the penguin from Happy Feet said not to, and I pushed him off. On day eight, I finished all of the pens and began one by one leading animals to each and every pen. And once I had them in their own spaces, I began my cow, mushroom, and sheep empires. During this process, I also forgot that pigs needed carrots now because I literally never use pigs for anything. So instead, I led them over to their new forever home where they would most likely be ignored until I had to move them in the future. Sorry, pigs. And now that all of my animals were situated, I went back to breaking the almighty 
block. And it was rewarding me with a bunch of iron that I one by one threw into the furnace. And while I was breaking these blocks, I had a literal pile of rabbits spawn. And this time I thought fast and I trapped two of them in the abandoned animal pen. I don't really know what I needed them for besides the rabbit's foot, but I mean, I might as well turn my island into Noah's Ark. And now that I had my new useless rabbit friends, I spent the rest of the night mining and smelting iron, and I may have been jumped by another spider mob, but we don't talk about that. On the ninth day, I finished another phase of the almighty block, and while I continued grinding for more iron, a second wolf spawned. And with my massive five head brain, I pushed him into the pen with the rabbits, thinking they would get along. And it's safe to say that, uh, I was very wrong. So much for Noah's Ark. I continued breaking blocks for more loot until two strays spawned, and these boys were hungry hungry for my cheeks. But the joke was on them because I pulled out that classic Uno reverse card that I always keep in my wallet and I clapped both of their cheeks and I now had some bones that I needed to use to breed my wolves. I broke the first mini pen and I pushed the wolves together so they could get to know each other better and after that I deforested all of the spruce trees that I had grown to make space for the new wheat farm that I was going to need to support my brand new army of animals. I added another dirt platform to the right side of the wooden bridge and I covered three water sources with wood slabs and logs with torches for light in the middle to hydrate all of the crops and keep them lit during all times of the night. I then spent the rest of the night tilling all of the dirt and filling them all with seed. I even fed all of my adult animals again to continue growing my army. On day 10 I started off the day with some more block breaking and I got my first gold ore which meant I had to use some of my limited iron to make a pickaxe to mine it. Ironically this is also my first piece of raw gold in a survival world for 1.7 because I had started recording this before the OP structures video. So I smelted it right away like some kind of trophy and after this I decided to use my bones from the strays to make some bone meal and speed up the original wheat farm on my main island so that way I could finally not have to look at it anymore. I took the seeds from these and I filled in as much of my new farm as I could and then I went back to breaking the block until two of the rarest mobs in the game spawned. Two white foxes. These guys were gorgeous. I built them a pen and I desperately tried to get both of them into it. Don't even ask how long it took because it was it was like eight minutes, okay? But hey, I ended up trapping them and I made a fence too high just in case they tried to jump and Operation Noah's Ark was officially a go again. So now that I had those two gorgeous foxes, I continued breaking blocks and immediately more of the snow foxes spawned, followed up by a freaking polar bear that was hunting them down. I felt like I was witnessing some Star Wars level bounty hunting going on here. Once the bounty hunter polar bear was done hunting down those wanted space criminals, I trapped him in another pen before he could get any more of my animals. Overall, I went to bed that night pretty happy that I, I became an animal hoarder. For the next two days straight, days 11 through 12, I kept bashing through block after block and collecting tons of resources. However, at this point, something began to feel off. The phases of the block felt like they were repeating themselves, and I never saw any messages about entering new phases, so I checked the help tab in game, and apparently I'm still in tutorial phase zero, even though I've broken more than 3,500 blocks. So I was curious at this point, I made a second world in creative mode and I tested out what would happen when I skipped phases and so many things were different. There were gifts that spawned, there was no weird 10 second timers. The phases actually showed that they were started in both chat and the help menu. And when the phases end, there was text above the timer that said upgrade in. So now that I figured out the problem, I went back to my world and I skipped the ocean phase since after my ice phase ended, it looped back around to the first one. Pause. So at this point, I had realized that I made a massive mistake. Remember how I said I was playing in 1.17? Oh yeah, one block skyblock acts very weird in 1.17. It doesn't work properly at all. In the very beginning, I literally never had left the tutorial, and even if I skipped to a different phase, it would just reset and break everything and restart. So at this point, I had to load up Minecraft 1.16.4 and restart my world because nothing worked in this world. And after the switch, all of my animals disappeared. So yeah, long story short, I just kind of copied over everything from this world and skipped to the ice phase because I barely got into it before it randomly reset. So yeah, pro tip for people that want to play one block skyblock in the comments, do not play 1.17. It will break your game. I had to transfer over everything that I had to 1.16. So yeah, that was fun. 
So after all of that drama was over, on day 13 I started off by harvesting all of the wheat that was ready so Operation Animal Army would be in full swing. I took the seeds and wheat and I bred each and every one of the chickens, cows, mushrooms, and sheep. And now that I was in the ocean phase, things were going to get real, so I was going to need a lot more secure spawn. I quickly built a wood path out of slabs that I could use as a mob spawn platform, and I added fence gates for the front for some added security. I then grabbed my bow and the few arrows that I did have, and I spent a lot of the night smacking these skeletons, zombies, and creepers around. Plus, out of the few spawns this world has seen, there was already a freaking spider jockey over there. So after eliminating all of those mobs, I used the first two bones that had dropped to tame my first dog and I continued farming until I could tame the second wolf however none of the skeletons wanted to drop me bones and the sun was rising so it looks like I wasn't moving them out of their pen anytime today. On day 14 I was not playing games with all of the mobs that would spawn on the island during the night so I made the executive decision to use some of my limited iron to make myself a full set of iron armor. And after this, I gathered all of the cobblestone that I had gotten so far, and I crafted a couple more furnaces so I could begin smelting it into stone for that gorgeous stone brick aesthetic that you all know I love. And while those were smelting, I decided to take the risk of guardian spawning, and I began breaking the great ocean blocks. I broke a ton of sand and some other sea blocks, plus some iron and gold, and two sea turtles spawned that, of course, I needed. Not only because turtles are pure and awesome, but also because I could use their eggs for different various farms. So I lured them into my infinite water source and I fenced both of these boys in so I could use them in the future and make a cool little ocean area. And now that I had two new turtle friends, I continued smashing through those blocks until I hit the holy grail. I had gotten my first diamond. And not long after finding the diamond, two trident drowned spawned and they didn't really do that much so I just kind of clapped their cheeks. And that's when I realized this world was set back to easy mode from when I made a new one. So I switched that boy back to hard mode because it's the closest thing I could get to hardcore and I was breaking my way through more blocks soon after. After the first couple of blocks that I had began breaking, I had found my first guardian spawn. And something was definitely wrong with this man, because he just kind of raved around my island before committing Senpuku off the edge. And not long after the first guardian, I had a second guardian, and this guy low-key got me kind of low. But he was executed just like the first one, nonetheless. So after all of the block breaking and the guardians, later that night while I was hunting for mobs, I found my first enderman. So I built myself a small little safety platform out of cobble, and because I broke my axe, I had to smack him to death with a pickaxe. But this guy dropped me my first Ender Pearl. I then spent the rest of the night grinding more mobs, and with the bones that I had earned, I tamed my second doggo. I began day 15 by moving my dogs away from their pen and breaking down all of the fences that were in my way. And if you noticed, I also lost both of the snow foxes, because when transferring over the worlds, I had to spawn in all of the mobs, and I had no clue how to spawn these guys in. So maybe I'll get more of them in the future, but for now, my beloved, you will be missed. And while I was breaking more blocks, I also found myself a second Diamonde. I continued breaking through different blocks of the cycle, and at this point, the Great Block was very mad at me, because he kept spawning mad creepers. It was literally all just creepers. But I did one by one delete them from existence for that sweet, sweet gunpowder that I could get for a future elytra and fireworks. I then lit up my platform with more torches so nothing else would spawn, and I went back to the block grind, and two dolphins spawned! And because it was raining, they were kind of just vibing around the platform. I had spotted the rare twin land dolphins, and if you like this video in the next 10 seconds, they will bring you great fortune in your future. But apparently not for me, because not long after they had spawned, a freaking elder guardian that hit like a dump truck had to struggle to finally yeet this dude off of the cliff. At that point, I was tired of seeing and hearing the rain, so just like the rest of my problems, I slept it away. Now that it was day 16, I grabbed myself a bucket from the chest and I borrowed some milk from one of my cow friends to get rid of the stupid mining fatigue from that sussy sea demon. And after that, I set off on a mission. Today, I was going to finish the ocean phase, so that way I could begin building my center island and finally a house. And not long after starting to break the blocks, I got my first monster party, which at first seemed terrifying until I watched the two guardians use reverse living no jutsu off the edge and the trident boys they kind of just stood there and let me let me hunt them so yeah not much of a monster party really 
After all the mobs were gone, I went back to breaking more of the blocks, and this time, it spawned some more trident boys, who also did nothing to stop me. However, this time, it was different. This time, one of them dropped me their trident, which isn't very useful for a skyblock world, but honestly, I couldn't complain at this point. I kept bashing through blocks until later that night, I was given a benevolent gift that had some paper and a music disc and another free trident in it. And at this point, I was now officially in the jungle phase, which was full of more cobblestone. On day 17, I was prepared for Operation Spawn Beautification. So I began the day by placing dirt all over the old mob platform and planting spruce and oak saplings on them. So that way I can get a lot more wood as I was working on spawn. I started replacing the grass around the magical block God with spruce wood planks in a kind of star pattern and I tested out adding crafting benches all around it but that kind of ended up being overkill. So I spent way more time fixing this than I should have but I was a lot more happy with how things were looking. And after this I grabbed some seagrass and I led the turtles from their pen all the way to a temporary farm area and this took a while because these boys were slow but now that they were out of the way I could keep working on my spawn throughout the day. On day 18 I replaced one corner of the center circle grass with oak plank slabs and I moved all of my chests there so that way they wouldn't be in the way and I broke all of the old chests and dumped my OCD nightmare into the four double chests. And now that they were out of the way, I completed the oak circle while trying to save as much of the dirt as I could from falling off the edge. I honestly really shouldn't have placed that much dirt. And while doing this, I also had to move my polar bear out of the way because he was directly in the center of the platform and while doing this, I came up with the perfect name for him. He was going to be Pablo. Pablo the polar bear. Can I get some love for Pablo the polar bear in the comments? Any Pablo the polar bears that I see in the comments will get a heart from me. I promise. Unless I don't see them. Don't don't quote me on that. Anyways, the process of turning the center into a circle took until the morning of day 19. I began day 19 by adding an additional touch of spruce wood to the main circle to make it look a little less plain. Except once again, Pablo the polar bear was in the way for part of it, so for now, I was just going to have to leave it half finished which to be honest, kills me inside. After this, it was once again time for some more beautiful deforestation. So I chopped down all of my oak and spruce trees. And while I was up on top of what I like to call a super tree, my ax broke. So I had to finish beating that wood with my bare hands. Winky face, I'm sorry for saying that. After collecting more of the trees, I used some of the oak wood to make more oak wood slabs and I expanded the platform that these trees were on so I could begin mass producing wood for more island expansion. And after the island was expanded, I rearranged the dirt blocks in a pattern with three blocks between each dirt on all sides and I planted the saplings in a checkerboard pattern so they wouldn't interfere with each other growing. And just like that, my tree farm was in full swing, baby. I spent the rest of the night tending to my wheat field and feeding my massive pile of animals. My army rose. On day 20, it was back to the block grind for me. And not long after going ham on that cobblestone, a trio of parrots spawned in. And honestly, I was pretty stoked about this, not gonna lie. I quickly ran over to my wheat chest for some seeds and I tamed all three of these boys. And just look at this little dude just chilling on my shoulder. I was so stoked because I honestly never get parrots in Minecraft because jungles are never near my house. Plus, you could say with this parrot on my shoulder, this world just became rated R. All right, that was, that was pretty bad. I'm sorry. Anyways, with my new friends joining me, it was back to doing the mine part of Minecraft. That is until one of the very next blocks spawned in two vexes. Honestly, I struggled to get the first one, but after a couple of good smacks, it was clown down. I guess the block giveth and the block taketh away. Also, for some great reason, the second vex decided to go hang out over in the void where he will probably be waiting to ruin future Payne's day when he builds his house over there or something. Or at least that's what the vex apparently wanted me to think because... Right as I spawned in some ocelots, he was back for my cheeks, but he forgot about my lucky Uno reverse card. These boys always forget about the lucky Uno reverse card. So after deleting that mistake from the game, I searched all of my chests for whatever fish I could find for the cats, and I fed all six of them to this first guy here, and uh, this boy scammed me. This dude stole all of my fish and gave me nothing in return. I mean, I, I guess you shouldn't try to buy your friends. Who would have guessed? 
After getting scammed, I went back to breaking more blocks until I got a benevolent gift chest. Except my inventory was full. So let's just move all these fish out of the- Wait, the fish that I had fed the cat were now back in my inventory. So I went back to feed the cat again and all four of the cod disappeared in one go. And at this point, I was very confused. So, what any other confused person would do, I backed away slowly, and I went back to the block, which after a couple bits of breaking, spawned me a fresh panda bear friend, and a duo of witches who, per usual, forced me to go and hide into a bunch of blocks while on half a heart. Anyways, after the poison wore off and I fully healed, I broke out and one by one, I destroyed each of the witches. At this point, the hunted had become the hunter. Overall, this was quite the roller coaster of a day. For day 21, I went straight back to the grind of breaking the block because today I was going to finish the jungle phase. And immediately I had earned a chest that had a trader spawn egg in it. Hopefully once I get some emeralds or villagers, this guy might end up giving me something that I actually wanted. But honestly, who am I kidding? I continued breaking more blocks and building up my wood and cobble supplies and the game was doing everything in its power to stop me by summoning more and more witches. But each of these times I was prepared, even though stone axes have absolutely terrible refresh rates when attacking. After deleting all those witches, I continued plowing through those blocks in the hopes that this phase would finally end. I went to go dump out my inventory and then tragedy struck. A monster party spawned in and in preparation, I ran through the pile of loot to get all the drops before they fell and the freaking game erased the floor beneath my feet. And I was the one that fell. And yeah, I, I got my first death on one block skyblock. Really weird feeling, not being hardcore. But yeah, I, I died from something really stupid. Nice. But at the end of the day, I guess I couldn't really complain because like I said, this wasn't hardcore. So I didn't really have to, you know, restart everything. So I just spawned back in. And after respawning, I began searching all of the chests to replace all of the stuff that I had lost. And at this point, I kind of realized just how much food in iron that I took with me to the void. So after recollecting some of my inventory, I broke some more blocks. And the first thing it decided to do was spawn me some more Vex. And I was naked and afraid. And while I was fighting those Vex, it also started raining. So now I was also wet, sad, and naked and afraid. So at this point, I said screw it and I bit the bullet and I made another full set of iron armor and a shield and I control alt deleted both of those dudes and then I went to sleep that gross Minecraft rain away. On day 22, I was on a roll. I kept getting more Vex spawns that I deleted one by one, a bunch more Witch spawns that I also deleted, two juicy diamond ores, and a whole bunch more chests full of random junk until I hit the final chest. That's right, I got another benevolent chest, and this boy had two fresh Diamondes inside. So I took all of the loot and I broke the chest, and just like that, I had completed the jungle phase. Finally! This phase had some of the worst enemies and the worst loot. So while it counted down, I ran around doing a classic Minecraft celebratory dance. And after the timer finally counted to zero, the desert phase had begun. Except I was not ready for that because if you hadn't noticed, I'm still pretty homeless. So I spent the rest of the night organizing all of my things and pushing my two new horse friends all the way into their pens. And to finish moving the animals out of my way, I made yet another small pen and I pushed the brand new panda friend inside of it. Don't worry, this man will definitely get a cool name in the future. On day 23, now that the jungle phase is over and I had a surplus of hella loot, I scoured all of my chests for oak wood and oak wood slabs and I began building out the path to where I would build my brand new house. And at this point, I already had a ton of plans. To the left side of this path, I was going to build a horse stable and another path that led off to something else. And to the right side, I was going to make a beach area for the teenage mutant Minecraft turtles to live in. And in the center, at the end of the path, I was going to recreate my original pyramid base from the ocean world. However, this time, I was going to use a combination of different woods and stone. That is, assuming I can make a stone farm of some sort anywhere near, you know, now. So after finishing the center path, I made some torches and I lit everything up just in case it became dark when I was away doing something, because you know, you don't want wild mobs on your one block, right? After lighting up the path, I went back to watch my original 100 Days of Ocean video, which you should totally watch after this one, by the way. So that way I could get proper measurements for the inside of the pyramid that I was going to build. 
And after I got enough information from that video, I built out a full square perimeter to start building the pyramid with. After that, I gathered all of my furnaces and I began mass smelting most of my cobble into stone. And at that point, I kind of realized there was no way that I could build this thing mostly out of stone. So it was on to the next best thing, which was spruce and oak wood. And now that everything was planned, I spent the rest of the day in a separate creative world making a test build, trying to figure out which blocks I wanted to use, and I wanted to also make sure that I had all of the measurements perfect or this was going to be a nightmare. For day 24, I spent the entire day expanding the perimeter more and filling it in with tons of oak slabs, except halfway through I ran entirely out of wood. So as the sun began to set, I blitzed through all of the spruce and oak trees in my farm, and let's just say, while I was doing this, there was a uh, issue on the platform over there. I forgot to finish lighting it up because I ran out of torches and there was an absolute army of busted mobs over there. So I did what I would like to call a pro gamer move and instead of facing them all, I went to sleep so in the morning all the zombies and skeletons became free rotten flesh bones and arrows. Anyways, after waking up the next morning, I went over and collected all of the loot and I had ended up with about 20 of each of the items. So you know what? That's capitalism. On day 25, after cleaning up the pile of mobs, it was back to working on the platform, except this time I was way more prepared. I gathered more supplies and I crafted myself a bunch of torches to finish lighting the platform as I went. And I also placed a bunch of random dirt blocks everywhere for some more saplings so that way I could replenish my oak wood as I went. And I spent the entire rest of this day doing the same thing over and over and over again. Literally the definition of insanity. Place slab, break tree, craft slab, place slab, break tree, craft slab. I think you get the point. Long story short, I had almost finished off the platform, except the sun had began to rise and I ran out of time. But that was okay because on day 26, I was on a mission. I began the day by gathering more trees and continuing to fill in the center area until finally it was over. The entire platform was filled in. So now that that was done, I ran around cleaning up any of the loose ends that there may have been. I mined any trees that had spawned, and I broke all of the dirt blocks and random slabs that I had misplaced throughout the process. Then to top it all off, I added the remaining torches needed to stop any mobs from spawning anywhere near this entire platform. And just like that, I was one step closer to starting my unnecessarily large house. Or at least that's what I would like to say if I hadn't ran into another problem. In this world so far, I haven't gotten any dark oak wood saplings at all. So I couldn't begin building the pyramid in the way that I had decided to build it. So in the hopes of maybe getting some of the saplings, back to breaking that block. And let me tell you, the desert phase was pretty hype. While I was breaking these blocks, I had gotten my first emeralds, there was lots of lapis and redstone, and I got almost back-to-back -back diamonds. That is, until these two foxes spawned in and one of them stole my diamond. I desperately tried to stop him from jumping off the edge, but that guy really did not want me to have the diamond. Wow. You should all leave a comment down below saying something like, wow, that fox was lame. Any anti-fox comments I see down there, I'll give him a heart, I promise. Well, with that tragedy behind me, I decided to keep breaking more blocks, and apparently the one block felt bad for me because he provided me with some more diamonds. I kept breaking through block after block, and even more foxes spawned in, and one of them was all about my chickens. I saw him just kind of hanging out over there, and this guy even began hopping over different pens to get closer to those sweet succulent boys. So I did what had to be done. And speaking of what had to be done, I also may have decided to yeet the other of the two first foxes that had spawned off of the side of the cliff. I'm sorry foxes, it's not you, it's me. And speaking of me, I became a very happy guy today because my very first villager spawned shortly after I went back to breaking the blocks. And I was freaking the hell out. I grabbed some supplies and I added a small little platform to the right side of my base and I fenced it all in and lit it up so that way this guy would be in maximum security. I then lured this man into the center by placing a bed when it was nighttime. This guy was probably the most important mob that was currently in this entire world. I, I guess besides me if you think about it. On day 27 I was back to that block grind and for some reason it kept throwing me all kinds of random different blocks. There were blocks from the jungle phase, the ocean phase, and a bunch of gross acacia and some birch wood. 
At this point, I had every single wood in the game except for dark oak. It was honestly insulting and disappointing. I continued on my grind until the block finally started spawning some mobs. I deleted the first group of husks that had spawned, and then it spawned a freaking pillager, who I quickly smacked in the face until I realized something amazing. This guy didn't have a weapon, and he was just friendly for some weird reason. Maybe he was a channel member. Quick shout out to all my channel members. Anyways, I made this man a nice orange acacia boat, pushed him into it, and I boated his way into his brand new enclosure. I can't wait to name him in the future when I actually get some name tags. After getting my brand new friend, I spent the rest of the day getting absolutely busted drops from the one block. I kept getting more emeralds and diamonds. I got a wandering trader that had some decent trades to spawn in that had a name that I didn't want to pronounce because I'd probably mess it up. And the final thing that I had got that topped off the day was two slime balls from a random chest, which meant I could now make leads to lead around my piles of animals. Although if you think about it, it must really suck to be that slime if you, uh, know what I mean. For all of day 28, I continued bashing away at blocks, and let me tell you, this was a very eventful day. The first thing that happened was a second villager spawned in, and this one was named Doris and they were absolutely freaking out until I put them in a boat and scammed them into captivity alongside the other villager. A while after getting that new villager friend, two more pillagers spawned in, and this time, they meant business. They clapped hard, but I did manage to remove them from my presence like the peasants that they were. Anyone else hear how that rhymed? That was, that was pretty good, right? After revoking those pillagers of their right to exist, something absolutely terrifying had happened. A monster party had spawned in, and this time I learned from before, and I actually backed up a bit. This party spawned a whole bunch of men in black husks, and a couple of OP pillagers that killed my trader friend. Overall, this raid wasn't that difficult, but man was I glad that I boxed off my villagers. I was prepared. One block giveth, and one block taketh away. I spent the rest of the day breaking away at the block, and during this time, I got a third villager friend that I had added to the gang. I also ended up with a chest that had a freaking evoker egg inside, and I really wanted the totem of undying, but for now, that's gonna be a hard pass for me, dog. Anyways, I continued at this through most of the night until I had hit a benevolent gift with acacia saplings in it. Literally everything but dark oak. And after breaking that chest, I was done with the desert phase. So, while waiting for the 70 second timer to go, why not show you what my loot looks like so far? At this point, I was up to 10 diamonds and a whole bunch of other valuables. I now had two pillager friends for some reason, and I was now up to four villagers that I could turn into carrot farmers to begin breeding. And pretty much all of my chests were looking like my worst nightmare of disorganization. On day 29, as I woke up, the block changed to its very next phase, the nether phase, which had me really doubting my chances of finding dark oak wood saplings. I started breaking through the blocks until I was stopped by my very first piece of ancient debris. And knowing that there was also going to be obsidian to break, I made the executive decision to use three of my only 10 diamonds to make my very first diamond pickaxe in this world. And just like that, I got my first piece of ancient debris and my first piece of obsidian. Shortly after this, while breaking away at more blocks, I was jumped by a band of piglins with swords, and these guys broke my kneecaps. I barely deleted them in time. I mean, just look at how low these guys had gotten me. And if you think that that was going to be the only near-death experience for today, then you would be very, very wrong. I continued breaking the block, and this time two hoglins spawned and chased me down to my house platform. I built up and slowly beat them with my axe until I was finally safe. Those guys have insane reach and they do so much damage. However, after getting back to the block, I was not safe for long because this time two blazes spawned. And the very first thing that these guys did after spawning in was kill one of my parrots in cold blood and set my entire spruce wood tree platform on fire. I quickly hunted them down before they burned down the rest of my platforms and everything that I had worked for, and one of them dropped me a blaze rods for my trouble. What a nice guy! Anyways, after that crisis was somewhat averted, I literally spent the rest of my night struggling to save my tree farm from burning down, which I can proudly say that I successfully did. It was not easy either, because it kept catching the floor on fire, the sides were on fire, the trees kept spreading to other trees, and I had to cut all of the bases of the trees off so that way the fire wouldn't 
couldn't keep spreading. And did I mention that during this entire time, I kept catching on fire and I almost died like two or three times. Either way, at this point, it was safe to say that I needed a break from the mystical one block. I was going to stop breaking the block until I was way more prepared than I was now. So for the next three days, days 30 through day 33, I began finally working on my brand new base slash house. Unfortunately, I couldn't get dark oak, so I had to change up what I built it out of because for some reason, I always have the worst luck in wood types in worlds like this. I began the project by working on the main entrance and front slope of the pyramid. And while I was here, I had my very first island visitor. This wandering sim stopped by with his free leads. I, I mean llamas, his llamas. I checked his trades and he had spruce saplings, not dark oak. Just watch, the second I finish this entire pyramid, I'm going to get dark oak wood. I call it now. Let me know in the comments if you think that's going to happen. Because I know people like to see me suffer. It's just part of being on YouTube. Anyways, did somebody mention free leads? I just kind of found them on the ground here. No strings attached. Get it? It's, it's a funny pun, right? Anyways, after dealing with that trader, I grabbed all of the random chests from my storage and I used the measurements that I had to place out an interior floor plan of chests and roof supports. And at this point, things were going pretty well. Everything was exactly as I needed it to be. All of the measurements lined up perfectly. The only problem at this point was going to be how much wood all of these chests were going to cost me. So each time I ran out of wood, I planted more super spruce trees and I dug my way up and cut them back down to the ground. I even decided to make myself my first iron axe so this process wouldn't take so long. I really needed to finish this house so that way I could begin trading with my villagers in amassing mass wealth so I could be on the top of this capitalistic society that I was going to create. Anyways though, after finally finishing all of those chests, it was nighttime and a ton of mobs started spawning on top of my base, so I kind of just booked it towards my bed. And of course, on the way by, a creeper decided that, hey, I'm gonna jump down and, you know, try to dive bomb him. And a skeleton shot him, and this guy kamikaze the middle of my path. Thanks for that, man. I, I really appreciate that. My day was going pretty well, but thanks. On day 34, I began the day by cleaning up the creeper hole and going through my inventory, except I conveniently didn't hit the record button, so I guess we'll just skip to the second half of this day where I began working on my organization. I first harvested all of my fully grown wheat and replanted them because I'm not some heathen, and then I took all of the wheat that I had gotten to use to mass breed all of my submissive and breedable cows and mushrooms. And once each and every one of them had failed No Nut November, it was time for the culling. One by one, I axe crit all of the adult mushrooms and most of my adult cows. And as Thanos would say, I'm sorry little ones, but my chests needed to be balanced. After snapping half of my cows from the world, I went back to craft all of the item frames that I could, but I was now poor with wood and trapped in a never ending cycle of needing more wood because everything in this world required wood. So I spent the rest of my night replanting my tree farm before going to sleep to get rid of the increasing pile of mobs that were spawning on my house. So on day 35, I woke up ready to obtain that crane. I grabbed some of my diamonds from my chest and I made my very first diamond axe. And after this, I made a whole bunch of ladders so that way I could climb up the trees without having to break any blocks afterwards. And I spent the entire day, and I mean the entire day, morning until sunrise, climbing up to the top of the trees and breaking them down to the ground, then planting a whole bunch more. And by the time it was sunrise the very next day, I had gotten just under 12 stacks of logs in that time, which honestly isn't that bad without efficiency 5, I, I guess. And now that I had enough wood to really make a dent in finishing off my base, I spent the next four days straight finishing different parts so this house could finally become a home. I began by finishing the front part of the perimeter, and then I continued it around to the sides. However, I couldn't go all the way to the back yet because I didn't quite know how the back was going to turn out. After working on the perimeter, I added a small central staircase in the back that splits off in two different directions, so that way there could be upper levels inside of the house. Then I added some slabs above the back part of all the chests to act as a part of the floor for the second floor, and I added stairs in front of each of those, so that way all of the chests could still be opened while also looking a lot nicer. I then filled in the second floor entirely so that way it met with the inside parts of the perimeter and I added a small little room in the back that would end up being the enchanting area. And after that I went to finish up connecting the back part of the base's perimeter except I had ran out of wood again. 
However, conveniently, I had a whole bunch of super trees that were just chilling in the middle of the base, so I cut them all down for the rest of the wood that I was going to need to finish off the entire bottom part of the base, and now, things were looking really good. On day 41, now that the bottom part of my house was mostly complete, I woke up and went back to feed all of my cows in mushrooms so I could harvest them for more of their skin. I, I mean leather, they're leather. After that, I gathered some coal from my chest and made two stacks of torches so I could fully spawn proof every surface of my base and never have to worry about dive bombing creepers ever again. And now that my base could finally be considered safe, it was time for some sweet, sweet organization. I began my crafting as many item frames as I could and honestly I was going to need so many more cows to finish all of this off. I began placing the frames on the right side of the chest and then I began my organization starting with the most valuable section. I saved a chest for netherite, made one for diamonds, emeralds, gold, iron, coal, redstone, and lapis and I separated all of them into their respective chests. And at this point, I was stuck waiting for cows to give me enough leather for all of the item frames that I was going to need. So while I was waiting, I decided to why not get started with my villagers, because I was tired of stone tools and this pitiful iron armor. I mean, after all, what was I, a character from the MCU? So I went over to my chest and I grabbed most of the stacks of dirt and I began adding on to the platform on the right side for a brand new villager hall. And as some of you will probably be wondering, why is he using his limited dirt blocks to make this platform? Well, I could always get more in the future. Plus this way, if a random fire were to break out for, I don't know, no reason, all of my villagers would be safe. Overall, I spent until sunup building this platform and one of my traders drank some milk to reappear and for some reason his name was Fernando now. Okay then. On day 42, the first thing that I did was plan out what I was going to do with the villagers. I wanted to make them a full trading hall, but realistically, I probably didn't have the supplies for that yet. So instead, I crafted them stone brick walls and a composter, and I began laying out a villager breeder. I placed some water in the center of a 13 by 13 box area, and I tilled all of the dirt in the center in a 9 by 9 area, and I planted the only five carrots that I had to begin their thriving carrot economy. And after finishing all of the walls, I broke up in the fence to the nearby villager pen as the sun went down to let these guys become farmers and sleep their first night in their brand new not prison. And now that these guys were in their new home, I then collected the other two who were trapped inside of boats and I rowed them in to join their friends. And now that all the villagers were here, we needed two more things. We needed more carrots, and we needed beds. So, I made a pair of shears, went over to make all of my sheep naked. They like it, trust me. And I crafted as many beds as I could to fill in half of the open areas with enough beds for them to begin breeding a ton. And now that we had beds, I grabbed all of my remaining bone meal to give my carrots a good boost in production. And I did the classic one in the offhand, one in your main hand, until I had enough carrots to fill in most of the farm. And at this point, it was getting dark and it was raining, so I went to bed for the night. To begin day 43, I harvested all of my brand new wheat, and of course, I replanted all of the seeds so future me wouldn't time travel back and probably beat me up. After this, I went over to begin feeding my cows and mushrooms until I noticed something a little off about the chicken pen. Somehow, this jerk fox got in here and ate every single chicken. So I deleted him. Thanks for that, man. It means a lot. I mean, the chickens aren't hard to replace, but like, come on, man, come on. In honor of the chickens that had fallen in Sir Chickenton from the ocean world, I then fed all of my cows and mushrooms better than I have ever fed them before. I mean, if it's even possible. I kind of just right clicked them a lot. So after that further overpopulation of my cow farms, I went back to check on all of the chests again for more bones because I swear there were still some somewhere and I actually did end up finding some. So I crafted all of those back into more bone mill and went back over to the villagers to do the offhand trick once again. And of course, during this entire process, the farmer that was apparently named Linda now was trying to steal all of my carrots. After I finished off bone milling, I planted all of the carrots so the farm was now full to the brim and I made it rain those sweet, sweet carrots all over the farmer and their friends. Please, Becky, let me smash. After I had the villagers and cows as ready as they could be, I spent the rest of the night working on one of the most cursed farms I have ever made 
in my life. I began by making a platform out of the random granite, andesite, and diorite that I had laying around so I could save on blocks, and I placed rows of sand with space in between so I could make a brand new sugarcane farm for some sweet, sweet paper. And while I was at it, I also planted all of my bamboo in some of the empty space so that way I could begin mass farming sticks for my future booming emerald trades. And uh, yeah, overall, Cursed Farm is pretty cursed. Somebody should call Yuji Itadori. On day 44, while I was feeding my cows, I made a grave mistake by accidentally right-clicking one of the fence gates and letting an absolute ton of these guys out. So, uh, yeah, I had a little bit cleaning up to do. I deleted all of the adult crunchy cows that were on the outside, and then I struggled to lure in all of the babies back into the pen with some wheat. But overall, this whole process was pretty easy, so honestly, I kinda can't complain. And after this, it was back to mass feeding my Moo Moo army. Anyways, after cleaning up the cow mess and feeding all of the cows, I decided that things were a little too dangerous around here. So I grabbed myself some fences and I began fencing in the brand new sugarcane farm just in case I were to, I don't know, fall off. But just like every retail store ever, I left part of the farm unboxed, which means it was probably filled with OSHA violations. And honestly, I think all the people who work in retail or have worked in retail and watch me will definitely love that joke. Anyways though, after somewhat safetifying the farm, totally a word, I had a massive wrinkly brain idea. I wanted to continue farming the block, but without all of the risk of, you know, arson. So I grabbed a bunch of stone bricks and I built walls and a roof around the block area spawn that was just far enough away to not get destroyed by monster parties or any other mobs that were spawning. And after this, I added a panic door that would block in any dangerous mobs that spawned as the piece to the existence. Either way, almost none of the nether mobs that would spawn should be able to get out of here. So I began testing this bad boy out and after two blocks, I got a chest with a diamond and my first piece of nether wart inside. Things were looking up today. I continued breaking the block throughout the night and everything was going great. I had a wither skeleton that spawned that I trapped in and I smacked him back to hell, which honestly must suck being tall. I mean, I, I would totally understand, you know, being <clears throat> six foot 11, but um, it, it, it sure must suck being tall. Anyways, by the end of this night, I was very, very glad that I had made this little structure because a freaking ghast spawned inside of it and started suffocating. I was literally just thinking, you know, what if a ghast would spawn? And uh, it looks like step ghast is uh, stuck. On day 45, I continued breaking blocks and my strategy was put to the ultimate test. First, a bunch of hoglins spawned in and of course they were stuck and became very easy picking. No problems here. Then a monster party spawned. There were a bunch of gold soldier piglin dudes, some magma cubes that all committed unalive no jutsu, another step gas that was stuck and needed step bro's help, and a blaze, the only mob that I was actually worried about. So I attacked the blaze and he started flying up out of the roof. So obviously they still broke part of my structure and this guy started shooting. So I quickly joined the phase clan and 360 drop shot him, but without the 360. Crisis was averted. Plus I learned that the next layer of blocks up was the actual safe zone because the shroom light that I had placed up there was still intact. So I filled the roof back in with cobblestone and I yeeted the remaining piglins down to the abyss where they belong. Not long after that incident, I was breaking more blocks and I had two more blaze spawn in and this little hut thing worked absolutely perfect. No more arson for them. Also fun fact, apparently piglins can um, open doors. So yeah, every time they spawn in, they open the door and chase me down until either I delete them or they turn into zombies. Anyways, today ended in the best kind of way because my villagers had made their first baby. My farmers were parents now. Welcome to hell. On day 46, my villagers officially became a village because these boys had hired themselves in Iron Golem, but that was not why I was here, at least not yet. I placed down a boat by the entrance and I lured out the first of my parent villagers and I separated them from their kids for their brand new job. I crafted myself a smithing table and now this guy was my very first blacksmith. He was going to be my new source of tools. I grabbed all of the emeralds that I had and I traded him for a ton of stone tools until I leveled him up to his worst stage, the iron. I sacrificed all of my remaining iron so this guy could level up again and he was offering me efficiency three shovels and pickaxes, which honestly I couldn't complain about. So I used the emeralds that I had earned to buy one of each and I used my last iron on him and now I was just kind of stuck on his trades, or was I? 
because that iron golem was looking like a snack now. However, I didn't really have any lava yet, so I couldn't kill him without angering the villager overlords. So instead, I pushed him inside of the walls of my base because there were some random mobs that were spawning in there, and I was kind of hoping they would get rid of him so I could just kind of clean up behind them and steal his iron. Anyways though, I finished off the night by harvesting more of my bamboo for those sweet sticks and my sugar cane for some paper and books. For day 47, I was going on my pain domination farmer arc. I began the day by harvesting all of the wheat that was ready and replanting the seeds again. And then after that, I was back to cramming even more cows and mushrooms into these already very, very overcrowded pens. And I would just like to add here that all of my jokes about deforestation and animals in Minecraft are just jokes. I love nature and I love animals and none of these are real because you know, it's um, it's a video game. I just thought I'd add that in here. No one really said anything about it in the comments, but it's always good to have like a disclaimer. Anyways, after feeding these guys all of my remaining wheat, I think it was time to cull the herd again because any more cows and I might just insta die by walking in there. So I began one by one deleting each and every adult cow and mushroom and by the time I was done, things were looking like the beginning of the Jimmy Neutron movie after all of the parents disappeared. Plus, I had gotten just under two stacks of leather and an absolute ton more steak. Honestly, it would have been perfect if I could have waited until I had looting three. I would never have to get steak ever again in this world. So after cleaning up all of my cows, I crafted all of the sticks that I needed for item frames, and I crafted a total of just under two and a half stacks of item frames. And after placing all of them on my chests in my house, I only needed 19 more until my storage could finally begin being perfected. And after this, I spent the rest of the night harvesting more of my bamboo, shearing all of my sheep, and placing even more beds in my villager area that I made with all of that fresh, juicy wool. Why is wool juicy? Why did I say that? On day 48, I was looking through my chest for an acacia boat to steal another villager, and I stumbled upon 58 more leather that apparently were just, I don't know, sitting there? So, it turns out I didn't need any more cows, and I crafted more of the sticks, and then I made all 19 of the item frames that I needed and now after placing them all out all of my chests were ready and prepared for maximum organization. So now that all of those were in place, I went back to the villagers to scam someone else into a boat, except I didn't really have any takers. That is until this super gullible chump, I, I mean friend, this friend wanted to go for a ride. I put him in the little area with my blacksmith and I gave him a fletching table to make him into a stick boy. After that, I crafted all of my current bamboo and the sticks to trade with him and I ended up with a whopping five emeralds. Things were going to take a while. So I spent the rest of this day just continuing being a farmer boy. For the next two days straight, day 49 through day 50, I was back on that block destruction grind because one of these days I was finally going to finish the nether phase. And while I was breaking the block, I ended up spawning another step ghast who suffocated, a couple more piglins who I led into my iron golem so he could delete them, and a couple more blazes that I let the rainwater damage until I one shot each of them. Well, at least one of them. I kept breaking the block while collecting the obsidian blocks that were thrown in here and there until I had a chest that gifted me with my very first bucket of lava. Which kind of sad to be excited about this, but I can now go smelt iron golems without upsetting the locals, if you know what I mean. Anyways, after all of that grinding, I had finally gotten a benevolent gift which gave me some more blaze rods, blaze powder, another bucket of lava, and some free netherite scraps. I broke the chest after taking the loot and I had finally done it. The nether phase was over. Plus, I I now had all 12 obsidian that I needed to create my first nether portal. However, I was going to wait for diamond armor before going in there because I'm not crazy, even though it's not hardcore mode. Maybe I am crazy in retrospect. On day 51, the next phase had begun and it was called idle, if that is how you pronounce it. Honestly, this was one of the most confusing phases ever. There were so many different kinds of blocks and a bunch of new really rare ones like a beehive, a bunch of honey blocks and slime blocks, and there was even more iron, redstone, lapis, emeralds, and diamonds. Honestly, things felt like they were going well. Too well. At this point, it had me wondering whether something bad was going to happen or not. And then, right after thinking that, a pile of angry bees spawned in with a pinkish chest in the middle. I yeeted all these bees out of my face, and apparently it was a rare chest that had a potion of luck and an enchanted book with some loot inside. So, after looting and breaking the chest, I continued breaking blocks until my efficiency 3 pick broke, and I was going to keep going until a skeleton horse spawned in. So, I decided, you know what? I'll let him just kind of chill in here, and we'll come back to get 
him before breaking the block, especially since I was procrastinating working on capitalism with all of my villagers. So as the sun went down, I used my brand new lava bucket to melt down my first iron golem for his four juicy iron. And I spent the rest of the night harvesting and replacing all of my bamboo with sugarcane so I could pump out books in the future. On day 52, I wasted three more of my diamonds to make another diamond axe because I was going to need a lot more wood for sticks. And after making that axe, I went over to my tree farm to deforest every tree that I had because I was going to replace them with a massive bamboo farm for even more sticks. I grabbed myself a bunch more oak slabs and I expanded this platform by four blocks on every side. And I made a small wall around the perimeter with cobblestone and wood fences. And as the sun went down, I placed out all of my remaining dirt, which wasn't really much, but I filled every single one in with some bamboo and it may have taken most of the day and it might not even be done, but this was still way more bamboo than the previous farm. After finishing the farm, I just kind of hung around admiring it in the distance, and then I had yet another massive brain idea. There are other blocks that bamboo can be placed on, and luckily it just so happens that I have about three stacks of gravel. So I grabbed them out of my chest and I began mass placing them, and then I placed even more bamboo on top, and by the time it was the next morning, this farm was looking really good and it was almost entirely full of bamboo. On day 53, I was going to use my brand new axe to mass harvest mega spruce trees. However, I couldn't resist the capitalistic urges inside me, so instead I crafted all of the bamboo and wood that I had into sticks and I began mass trading for emeralds. And during this process, I had to wait for these guys to refresh their inventories a bunch of times. However, after trading with the toolsmith, he finally got diamond tools. And as a slap in the face, he had diamond axes now. So it turns out I had wasted those three diamonds after all. Anyways, after trading away everything that I had, I made about six stone swords and I went absolutely ham harvesting all of the bamboo farm. And this thing so far gave me enough bamboo to make 10 stacks of sticks, which is the equivalent of 20 villager trades. Honestly, not bad, but I was going to need a lot more. On the beginning of day 54, I noticed a couple of my villagers had started phasing through the walls again, and there was even one walking on top of my house. So I couldn't let the disrespect go unpunished, so I went over to push him off, and this guy was super persistent. So instead of just pushing him off the edge, I actually gave him a good yeet problem solve. Anyways, after messing around with those villagers, I prepared myself for a huge grind that I was about to go through. And for the next three days until day 57, I planted, climbed my way up with ladders, and I chopped down spruce trees non-stop until my axe had broken. And on day 57, after I had cleaned out my inventory, a wandering sim spawned in. And this guy had lily pads and some tropical fish buckets. So of course, like the man of culture I am, I ended up buying 10 lily pads, even though I wanted way more of them for my sugarcane farm. And I ended up buying two tropical fish just in case I can't find them anywhere in this world. Either way, these might have been bad impulse buys, but like, listen here. All right, I got nothing. I got nothing. Anyways, after this massive tree chopping excursion, I had ended up with this chest full of goodies. It was safe to say this was going to last me for probably 10 more minutes of trading. On day 58, I crafted myself two new boats and I placed the first of them near the entrance to the villager's prison. And at first, no one wanted to leave, but then when I finally pushed a guy into the entrance, all of a sudden everybody wants to leave. A second villager just barely escaped, and every time I tried to put him in separate boats, he literally would not cooperate. However, finally, I managed to separate them, and boat by boat, I added them to the trader's, uh, I honestly don't know what to call this, it's a pretty awful place. Anyways, I placed down two Fletcher tables and I began dumping tons of sticks on top of these guys. And after that, I used all of the emeralds that I had gotten from the sticks to buy enough diamond shovels, some axes, and one iron pickaxe to level this guy up, and he got a diamond pickaxe with the efficiency one. Honestly, this guy's enchants are immaculate. So at that point, I had realized that instead of relying on this guy, I should instead go and try some good old-fashioned enchanting. So I started out by harvesting all of my sugarcane once again, and I made as many of them into books as I could until I ran out of leather again. So it was back to loading up these cows with some more wheat, and since at this point I was stuck waiting for the cows to breed again, I spent the night going around leading iron golems with leads to non-wooden areas and melting them with lava for some free iron, and just like that, one, two, three, I had gotten 11 free iron. For the 59th day, I began by feeding all of the cows once more for maximum leather production. And after that, it was back to some more good old fashioned trading. I ended up blowing through an inventory of sticks for some emeralds, and while I was waiting for them to refresh, I grabbed another boat to try and scam 
yet another villager out of the pen. And um, long story short, no one wanted to leave until these two babies booked it. I broke the boat and one ran back in and the other one bolted to the top of my house. So I did what I would do to the iron golems and I started lavaing him. Except he ran on top of my base and you know, I didn't want to torch it. So I kind of just let the guy go. However, while I was finally getting a real villager into the boat, the baby ran back up. So this time I said screw it and I broke the floor and I doomed him to the shadow realm. And after filling in the hole with definitely the same block that I built it with and not a piece of cobblestone that's going to bother me until the rest of the series, I boated my brand new friend over to the little trading center and I expanded their cage area and turned him into an armor so I could get some supreme diamond armor. So now that this guy had his role, I began trading a ton of sticks for almost a stack of emeralds and I bought a crazy unnecessary amount of helmets, chainmail boots, and shields until later that night he had gotten his first pieces of diamond armor. He ended up getting prot 2 diamond legs, which weren't that bad, and feather falling diamond in boots, which I could take it or leave it. I can't exactly fall and live in a one block world, but you know what? Whatever. At this point, I was trying to get enough emeralds to trade for both of them. However, no one wanted to trade. So instead of doing that, I guess it was just off to bed for me for the night. On day 60, I spent the entire day getting in those sweet, sweet trades. I traded massive amounts of sticks until I was back to being pretty much out of wood. I started buying multiple pieces of diamond armor so I can get to the final level and see what else my armorer friend had to offer. And when I finally unlocked them, you guessed it, they were garbage. I got a projectile protection one for the chest piece and protection one for the helmet, which honestly both of those are pretty useless to me. However, at least I could combine all of my leggings to get prot for, right? Well, if I had enough iron to make an anvil, then sure I would do that. However, I didn't, so I guess I just have all of these diamonds just to flex. You know how it is. On day 61, all of my Fletchers wanted to be greedy and not refresh their trades, so while I was waiting for them, I went back to breaking the magical one block. And honestly, this phase really clutters your inventory so, so much. I really need to fix all of my storage because it's driving me nuts. Anyways, after waiting a while for the refresh, I went back to check on them, and finally they were all ready for some more capitalism except for this one guy this guy raises prices to 40 which is um that's whack just saying after I finished trading with all these guys for sticks for emeralds, I bought my first chest piece and my first helmet and I put them all on. And at this point, I was now a man that was wearing full diamond armor, plus some of them actually have protection enchantments on them. At this point, things were going really well. I spent the rest of the night with some more wheat, feeding the cows, and then I finally purged all of those very cows that I've been breeding for the last couple of days. And once I had all of that leather, I used it to craft enough books for 12 more bookshelves, which was easily enough for an enchantment setup. That is until I realized if I made an enchantment table, then I couldn't make the portal to go to the nether. So I guess I was not going to be enchanting anytime soon. That is until the pro gamer move that I made the very next day, on day 62. On this day, I started out by making a little platform next to my spawn area, and I built up the nether portal on the small amount of space that I had, saving all four corners just so I could have the extra obsidian. Then I crafted a flint and steel, and I lit the portal. And now that I had everything that I needed to be prepared for the nether, I ran through it. And quickly after arriving on the other side, it was such an odd feeling to see all of this full land. So I began exploring around my area to look for any structures and or easy access lava so that way I could get the obsidian that I was missing. And there wasn't really much near me, but if you look across this massive lava sea, you can just barely see it over there, a nether fortress. However, that is going to be for another time because that's like insanely far away and I would need tons of blocks and probably fire resistance just to not die on the way there. Anyways, after exploring my area and not finding any easy access lava, I decided to do a pro gamer move. You know those corner pieces of the nether portal that you don't need? Well, it turns out you also don't need them inside of the nether. So I stole the top two of them that I needed and I left back to the overworld to craft my brand new enchantment table. I went back to my house and I placed the remaining bookshelves and added the table to the middle and boom, level 30 enchantments are a go. So I made myself a grindstone and I used it to disenchant my axe and after only one enchantment this boy got unbreaking 3, efficiency 4, and fortune 3 
which was all super pog even though fortune basically does nothing on an axe. And now that I had the almost perfect axe, I spent the night cleaning away all of those trees that I kind of just left in the middle of my base back from when I was harvesting tons of wood. And for the next five days straight, days 63 through 68, I went into detail organizing all of the chests inside of my house now that those trees were finally gone. And if you're wondering why this process took so long, um, let's just say the level of disorganization present in the chest near my spawn was unfathomable. There was everything everywhere. And I mean it, literally. However, after almost the two hours that it took me to do this, everything is now exactly where I want it. Just to look at all of these organized chests. Oh, and any of the empty ones are placeholders for different things that I don't really have yet. Either way, this was such a relief. Like the only chest on the island besides these that had anything left in them that was disorganized was this chest over by the villagers that had all of the different potion ingredients inside of it. Because these were going to go in a separate section in the second floor of my base. Besides this though, every other chest that's been laying around spawned for all of these days are finally empty. So it was time to remove them. And while I'm at it, I also might as well take all the furnaces, even though I'm missing the iron to turn them into auto smelters. On day 69, nice, I was ready to work on my house now that my inventory was fully sorted into the chests. So I grabbed pretty much all of the spruce wood that I had left and I spent until the end of day 70 filling in the upper layers of the pyramid until I was finished. I also made a great decision of alternating the spruce logs every other layer for the top portion in comparison to how I did it for the bottom which was every fourth layer which conveniently enough uses so much more wood. And speaking of wood I actually ended up running out of logs right as I was about to finish it so I had to take a quick deforestation break. Gotta keep team trees on on their feet. Anyways, as the sun began to set, I had finished lighting up all of the new layers on the base and the pyramid was finally complete, at least for now. So while I was on the top, I decided to watch the sunset for a bit and after that, I went back down to the ground to look at the pyramid all lit up in the dark night and this was honestly looking so much better than I had originally thought it would. Now that the roof was done on day 71, it was on to the inside of the house. I used the only dark oak wood that I had to make some dark oak wood fences that I then placed around the upstairs area to act as both an accent to match the lighter woods and to act as a banister so I didn't just you know fall off and honestly this may not seem like it but it was mad worth it to me wasting most of my very limited and one of my favorite kinds of wood that this world refuses to give me saplings for so after finishing the fencing I had a couple more plans for the inside of the house but to be honest I didn't really know what to do next so instead I decided to procrastinate and begin harvesting some different crops so I broke all of my three high sugarcane and then I went on to harvest my entire field of fresh wheat and after that I didn't really know what to do again. That is until I looked at the middle and there were still those horses just kind of hanging out in the center. And to be honest those horses were the only thing stopping me from actually working on the block some more so I went over to get some leads and pulled these undead boys all the way over to the brethren and I tied them up on the fence so I could go back to breaking that block. Because honestly I was just like that dog from Courage the Cowardly Dog who couldn't stop licking the bone in the sewer. If you get that reference you were probably traumatized as a kid. Anyways, I was breaking that block like crazy because I needed more. It was my capitalistic job to consume. And immediately a monster party spawned. And one of the least intimidating ones I have ever seen yet. I guess I should, um be careful right all right I'm, I'm sorry anyways i spent the night breaking away at the block killing bunches of sky demons like fish trapped in barrels and organizing all of my inventory into my house chest as i went so that way i didn't have to clean out any more chests and towards the end of the night i ended up getting another benevolent chest and this one had a free saddle and my very first name tag inside which only meant one thing I broke the chest and just like that the phase was over and right on time apparently because the sun had started to rise. On the beginning of day 72 the next phase began and apparently it's something called the desolate land but all I saw was stone bricks which are far from desolate because stone bricks are by far a superior building block and I will fight you over that. So I began breaking the blocks and I guess I see why they called it desolate because there wasn't really much else besides just the stone bricks. That is, until a group of silverfish decided to jump 
jump me. So uh, yeah, that was that was something. But hey, that's enough distractions for now. No more one block for a while because I had things that I still needed to do. So instead of wasting the time, I went back to work on the inside of my house. I began by finishing the wood pillars that were on the inside because they were meant to go all the way up to the ceiling. And after that, I finished off the back wall that was near the enchantment setup. The inside of this base was honestly really coming together. I just needed to start adding more things on the inside like furnaces, brewing stands, ender chests, and you know, all the typical things that you would need in a survival world cough cough and if i ever ended up with enough iron then i could also make some chains and hang some lanterns from the ceiling to kind of light up that super dark area up there it, it looks kind of awful also while i'm at it the oak wood floor on the ground floor is kind of uh it's kind of meh not really a big oak wood kind of guy so being the scatterbrained person that i am instead of working on all of these things that i just listed out i instead began turning this weird little space that i had left over in the sides of the pyramid into an underground villager cell prison so i could really start to get all of my enchantments together for my armor and tools. So for the next three days, days 73 through 75, I worked on building up each of these cells and one by one I boated each and every one of the villagers into their brand new holding cells similar to some Pirates of the Caribbean level stuff. Except in here, they actually have a job, they have an economy, and they get a free bed. I had to pay for my bed, both in Minecraft and in real life, so they should feel lucky. Anyways, while I was moving these villagers, I also began cleaning up the messes that I had been making while kind of dealing with all of them. I broke down all of the fence for their old weird little cage thing that I still don't know what to call, and I may have pushed off a couple of stragglers, but um, we don't talk about that. I also did something that I've been waiting to do for literally eons now. I lava that one guy that had been hanging off the cliffside next to the villagers for like 30 plus days now. The dude just didn't move. He was just terrified, and he just kept standing there. His time had come. At the end of the night on day 73, I topped it all off by melting all of the iron golems for the juicy iron after leading them off of any wood structures so I didn't have to deal with any accidental arson. And I ended up with a sweet 13 iron, which I guess wasn't that sweet because that's kind of weak for how many iron golems I killed. Honestly, I should really just make the push to make an iron farm inside of this world. On day 76, I trapped another villager and I brought him into what I like to call the dungeon. And after getting him into his little hut, I crafted three new lecterns so I could begin getting some enchantments and I rerolled this man for about five minutes straight until he gave me mending for a pretty mediocre price of 22 emeralds. I'll take 20, or I guess one because I'm kind of poor right now. So after that, I went on to try and fix that poor issue by crafting myself three stone swords that I was going to use to go and break down a ton of the overgrown bamboo that I had been ignoring for a long time now. However, before I ended up breaking all of it, I actually broke through all three of these swords, and those were the last cobblestone that I had, so I guess I was kind of just done there. I went and crafted all of the bamboo that I had gotten into sticks, and after trading them with all of my Fletchers, I had gotten another 40 more emeralds. On day 77, I remembered one of the random cool things from 1.16 that honestly no one really thinks about or remembers. You can use blackstone to make stone tools. So I crafted a whole bunch more stone swords so I could go back and finish breaking the rest of that bamboo. And after blitzing through it and breaking my last stone sword again, I had yet another inventory full of sticks. And after trading all of these with the villagers, this put me up to a whopping 77 emeralds, which is probably the most rich I've ever been in this world so far. Also, conveniently enough, that was perfect because I was going to go for protection for next while re-rolling my next librarian. And if you're wondering why I needed that many emeralds, it's because oftentimes librarians like to rip you off for the big protection for enchantments. They can go up to 64 emeralds per enchant. Honestly, they're scam artists. After only three rerolls, this guy gave me protection for, and it was for only 26 emeralds, which is the lowest and easiest I have ever gotten protection for in my life in this entire game. So I bought two of them with the emeralds that I had, and after that, I went back to get just enough more bamboo since the stuff instantly grows pretty much always, and I went back to buy a third protection for book. And now that I had everything that I could afford, I grabbed all of the iron that I had, and I crafted a brand new anvil. And now that I had an anvil, I went over to my grindstone to wipe the enchantments from both my boots and my chest piece, and I enchanted each of them with a level 3 enchantment that for some reason still only gave me unbreaking 3. I was jebated. Every single enchantment in this world besides my axe has just been unbreaking 3. I feel like I'm cursed. 
Anyways, after enchanting them, I used the anvil to add protection for and mending to the boots, and I named them Kumanu O Aruku. If I said that right, I probably butchered it, but hear me out here, that is Japanese for walking on clouds. I don't know where that came from, they just kind of like spouted out of my mind at the moment. So after enchanting those boots, I put them on, and then I gave the chest piece protection for, and I named it Take a Grenade for You. Do you like the difference there? Do you like how it just goes from like, oh, this one's Japanese for a cool, st to just Bruno Mars song? Because my brain, I, I don't know, it just does it sometimes. I just, I'm sure Bruno Mars would be happy. Or maybe appalled. Either way, I don't really care. On day 78, since I was out of sticks for more emerald trades, and I didn't feel like going back to mining more trees, I instead decided to go back to breaking the block. If I could push through enough phases, I could maybe beat the ender dragon by the end of these 100 days, which would be perfect. Anyways though, after the first bunch of blocks I had broken, I got a bunch of cave spiders spawn in, so I booked it to the end, and one of the never-ending iron golems that kept spawning in took care of all them for me. And that's when I had a prime idea, a Twitch prime idea. Why not trap an iron golem in the block room and just let him take care of everything? And honestly, this worked out perfectly. I put the guy in there and the first group of skeleton riders that had spawned in were absolutely obliterated within seconds. And after this, things, uh, things just got worse, much worse. The block had spawned in a freaking charged creeper. I was so glad that I installed the backup trap door behind the regular door because wow. I ran up and smacked this guy a couple times until he was finally clowned down. Honestly, if I didn't have that trap door, how was I going to kill him in a safe way? What if he blew up? You know how many animals in like progress he would take with him? So honestly, at this point I was thinking things could not get much worse than that, right? Welp, I was wrong because the very next spawn was an evoker, and I was so glad that I had a lot more protection for now. Th things heated up so fast. The evoker was just barely slain by the iron golem, and I got to walk in and yoink that very first free totem of undying, which I quickly put into my offhand. Which, to be honest, I don't know why I did that, because with super creepers, a shield would have probably been better, because if you, you know, if, if a creeper just blows up, I'm just gonna fall to my death after I revive. Anyways though, today was a wild day. After those incidents, I spent until day 84 grinding the block and organizing all of the loot into my chests. And during this time, so many things were happening. Mobs were spawning like crazy, and that poor iron golem had to fight tons of cave spiders, he fought off hordes of silverfish, and he even took a small creeper explosion that I may have been responsible for. But this man made it through it all. That is, until the next monster party. There were a ton of vex, and there was another freaking evoker in the middle. And the uh, iron golem stood zero chance, similar to the evoker, because this man also yeeted himself into the abyss shortly after killing my friend. Or, I guess acquaintance? You know what? I, I don't even know what to call the iron golems, I kinda didn't care. Honestly though, this would be a lot more challenging if the blocks on the ground didn't disappear, so that way the mobs wouldn't just fall, but you know what? Whatever. I'm glad I didn't have to deal with it. Overall, during this entire phase, I ran into probably about 5 super creepers and at least 5 evokers. Plus, I got a ton of stone bricks, which will come in super handy for future projects. And at this point, the blocks just keep humming and coming and coming, until finally, on day 84, I had hit a benevolent chest, which can mean only one thing. On the beginning of day 85, I broke the benevolent chest and a timer for 100 seconds had popped up. This might end up being the final phase. The end. And then it was finally here. Ender Dragon, I'm coming for you. So naturally, the first thing that I started doing was mass breaking more of the blocks, and things seemed oddly peaceful and easy. The only mobs that were spawning were endermites that the iron golems quickly clapped out of existence. I was expecting to get some endermen, and then I thought of it. Shulkers. What if shulkers could spawn and hit me with levitation and drop me to my death? So, just in case, I went over and grabbed myself a bucket of water for some of those clean MLG water buckets. Just in case. And after that, I continued breaking more of the blocks, and here and there, there was a bunch more endermites spawned in, until I had gotten the first enderman. And this guy did so much damage to the iron golem. I, I had not realized how much endermen really hurt iron golems. After only one encounter, my poor guy here's cheeks were barely holding up. And not too long after that, he had to fight yet another group of three Endermen that had all spawned in at the same time. He managed to knock out two of them before his time was up. Can I get some 07s in the chat for this man? 
This man that I quickly replaced with yet another free source of iron and defense. Overall, I was breaking blocks in the end phase until about day 87, and I managed to kill a bunch of shulkers that I'm pretty sure at this point couldn't even drop shulker shells. That is until I got the first drop. Their drop rates are pretty terrible, just gonna say that now. Overall, during this process, I also learned that I can't MLG water bucket because all of the oak wood are planks instead of solid blocks. So if I try to MLG water bucket to any part of the wood, probably just gonna die. On days 88 and 89, I continued breaking away at the blocks and things went from zero to 100 pretty fast. A monster party spawned in and they one hit KO'd my golem defender. There was a ton of Endermites, some Endermen, and a Shulker box. I started out by quickly taking out the Shulker, and he had dropped me my second shell, so I could now make my very first Shulker box. The only thing is, while killing him, he had hit me with his Levitation. So, I went to hit that dank MLG water bucket on the top of my block dome, instead of the slabs, and, um, I failed. I don't want to talk about it. Anyways, shortly after that failure, my pickaxe was about to break, so instead of bothering with getting more wood, to get more emeralds, to trade with more villagers, to get another pickaxe, I, I did it the lazy way, and I just crafted a second one using the diamonds that I had. And I went to go enchant it, and it got on breaking three only again. I'm cursed. But things weren't that bad, because I went to combine it with my efficiency four pickaxe, and I named it Pikmin Remastered. Because, I don't know, the Nintendo Switch has no Pikmin love. Plus, I mean, Pikmin? Get it? Get it? All right, all right, I'll stop. On day 90, after probably the longest set of blocks yet, and the second craziest, because that idle place was absolutely insane, while I was breaking the blocks, my screen went black and said that the end was near. I looked into the hut, and there was another benevolent chest waiting for me alongside the end portal down below. It was finally time to go to the end. And conveniently enough, after checking my ender pearl chest, I had just enough blaze powder and pearls to go there immediately. However, first, I was going to need to prepare. So, the very first thing that I did was break the benevolent chest to see what the after phase was like, and apparently the blocks are all just a random combination of everything. Honestly, I don't know, but at this point, I was just kind of wasting my time breaking the block, so instead, I spent the rest of the night making some stone tools and mass harvesting my bamboo again for some more emeralds, so that way I could begin making a god bow. And boy, do non-auto bamboo farms this size take absolute ages to harvest. However, after picking up all of the remaining bamboo, I had about two inventories worth of sticky boys ready to corrupt my villager economy. I finished off the night by trading with my Fletchers by waking them up for only 48 emeralds before they stopped refreshing their trades, so I just went to sleep for the night. On the next day, day 91, I woke up and ran straight to my villagers to finish trading the remaining sticks in my inventory. While I was waiting, I checked out their bows and they were all absolute garbage, so instead I went to go check out my options when enchanting a fresh bow, and for the third tier enchantment, I was going to get infinity. So now, I also needed more XP because I was just under level 30. So I started out with some easy XP by taking out my iron and gold that were finished smelting from the furnaces, and I used all of my bottles of XP that I had gotten from Lay Block, however, it still wasn't quite there. And I didn't really feel like making a mob farm, so I did the next best thing instead, and I went back to breaking the block for different ores and their XP. And there was yet another monster party that was absolutely awful. This thing was full to the brim of just endermen and endermites. And after struggling to clean them up because most of them ended up falling, I still was just under level 29. However, this gave me another, even better idea of how to get that XP. So on the beginning of the 96 second day I went through my nether portal so I could gather as much nether quartz as I could so I could get that super easy XP. In the literal second I stepped foot in there, there was free XP everywhere. And after mining for less than a minute, I had already gotten to level 30, however, I wasn't quite done yet. I continued harvesting ores until I had enough for a second level 30 enchantment, just in case. Plus, I also stumbled upon a mini crimson forest with some free wood variants that I hadn't yet gotten in this world. Overall, it only took me about 5 minutes and I left the nether with level 34 and a ton of new quartz and gold nuggies. So now that I had all the level that I needed, I went to enchant my bow for infinity, and that's literally the only enchantment that I got. I was once again scammed. However, this time I expected it, and I had a second tier 3 enchantment ready. And this one gave me power 4, which, you know what, honestly, that works. 
So I combined the two in an anvil and I named it Dragon These because, I mean, do I really have to say why? Anyways, I went to trade with the villagers for their Unbreaking 2 bows for Unbreaking 3 and as I tried to combine everything, I was once again out of levels. Boy does being poor in Minecraft have its perks. And boy did they suck. But it was all good because I spent the rest of the day back in the nether where I quickly got all of the levels that I needed plus I may have deviously licked some glowstone there at the end. After getting back on the morning of day 93, I crafted all of my new glowstone and gold into ingots and blocks and I had made out like a crypto scammer. After this, I went back to my anvil and I combined the two bows to make Dragon These that much closer to his best self. And now that I had my bow ready, there was only a couple more things that I was going to need to defeat the dragon. I grabbed myself some soul sand and I placed a small patch in the middle of my base and I planted the only nether wart that I had so I could begin brewing some potions. And while I was waiting for that to grow, I used one of the blaze rods that I had to make a brewing stand and I filled it up with a full set of water bottles. And after that, I placed a chest by my main entrance and I began organizing everything that I was going to need for the dragon inside of it. And while I was organizing, I ended up being out of cooked steak, so I put more into the furnaces. And at this point, I was pretty much stuck waiting for both my nether warts to grow and my food to smelt. So I spent the rest of this day harvesting all of my crops again. And while doing this, I ended up with a stack and a half of wheat and two and a quarter stacks of sugarcane. Because honestly, you never know when you're going to need the stuff, and I am a hoarder, like I always say. On day 94, while I was still organizing my inventory for the dragon fight and waiting for that nether wart to spread, I realized that I didn't really have a melee weapon. And listen, I didn't need something with sharpness 4 or 5 for the dragon fight, but I wanted it. So I know I said I wasn't going to build a mob farm, but here I am building a mob farm. So for the next three days straight, I worked away at a brand new mob farm. I wasn't going to be anything big, but I did already have an idea for exactly what I wanted. I began by building a small little platform off to the side in between my bamboo farm and my sugarcane farm, and I made a center area that would become the killing chamber. Pretty soon this platform is going to be covered in a pile of mobs. And after that, I built a little box around it, and I built straight up 22 blocks, so that way each mob that falls becomes a one-hit kill on the platform. And after I got to the sky, I built a large platform up there with four areas in the middle that would have water to push all of the mobs down to their doom. Unfortunately though, while I was up here, I actually ran out of my stone bricks again, and at this point, I had two options. I could either A, make a cobblestone generator and slowly smelt the stone so it matched, or I could do the quicker thing and build with some other material that didn't match. Either way, I needed to get back down for more resources, so I took my chances for an epic MLG water bucket from a height that would definitely explode my kneecaps. And of course, like the MLG Call of Duty pro that I was, I stuck the landing with 10s from every judge. Except for the iron golem that was stuck inside of the hut, almost dead. We don't talk about him though. Anyways, after looking at the supplies that I had to choose from, I, um, I could not build something that was going to be a mismatched mess of awful. So instead, I put together some of my iron to make four new hoppers, and I made a small little cursed platform out of the different remaining stone brick blocks that I had, and I made a super efficient cobblestone farm here by using four water sources on stairs, that way I could also open the chests, and a lava over the top, so that way all I had to do was stand there and hold down the click button, and it would just produce either cobble or stone. And on day 98, I had yet another big brain idea. So I started the day by stealing yet another villager, and I began rerolling him inside of the dungeon in the hopes of getting silk touch, so that way my pickaxe could cut the smelting process entirely in half. And honestly, this guy was awful. I kept rerolling him time and time again with zero luck for silk touch. That is, until I got something way significantly better. This man gave me a sharpness 5 for an actual cheap price. That was literally the entire reason why I was building this mob farm in the first place. So I bought it in a heartbeat, and it was going to cost the exact 5 levels that I had to add it to my axe. However, I wanted to name the axe something cool, like the extra gamer that I was, so I quickly needed another level. However, everything was all good because I still had stake in the furnace, which conveniently gave me enough XP to get that 6th level. And after that, I added sharpness 5 to my axe, and I named it Choppy Toppy, because if you get it, you get it. It's a pretty funny name, not gonna lie. And now that I have my new axe, I borrowed another villager and tried rerolling him, except for some reason this guy didn't like the idea of working for free while being trapped in a small room against his will, which I really don't understand with these guys. I, what more do you want? So to get this guy to work, I gifted this Squidward a bed because Squidwards are known to love beds. And now he started cooperating. 
and about after 3 minutes of rerolls, he dropped that dank silk touch book in his trades that I happily bought. And while I was over here trying to add it to my Pikmin pick, it conveniently also costed only 5 levels, so I went back to break some more blocks for some random XP in an unbelievable monster party spawned. I'm not sorry for that pun. And one by one, I used that axe to delete all of the bees that didn't run away. And after erasing all of them, there was conveniently a bunch of mobs that had started falling into the mob platform that I used for the rest of the XP that I needed to give my pickaxe silk touch. It was safe to say that I was moving up in the world. On day 99, the first thing that I did was bring my brand new silk touch pickaxe over to the stone farm and I hit that sweet macro on my keyboard and I ate some leftover Halloween candy as my game made some free stone for me. I was sitting there for about 8 minutes doing this until I had way more stone than I needed. I should have probably made this way sooner than now, but you know what? It's kind of too late now, so oh well I guess. Now that I had all the stone that I needed, I crafted some bamboo scaffolding and I climbed my way up to the top and I quickly finished the mob farm because I was on a mission and out of time. I began by adding two high walls all around the platform, and after that I used my trapdoors as false platforms in the center that would trick the mobs AIs into jumping down into the water that would push them into the central grinding pit. And now that the inside part was done, I added a roof on top of it and I lit it up so nothing would spawn up here and dive bomb me from below. And while I was up here, I got a gorgeous view of my base at night, including this jerk villager that was kind of just hanging out on the top. So after staring at my base in awe, I decided to climb my way back down, and this farm was already going ham by the time I got to the bottom. I was standing extremely close to it, and it was still producing mad mobs. And these mobs? Printed XP. Honestly, it's too bad that I waited until the last day to make this. I probably should have made this ages ago. And now, on the beginning of day 100, I was fully prepared to defeat the ender dragon. So I grabbed one of my still only two netherwort because they refused to grow for some weird reason, and I made three level two potions of slow falling just in case I ended up needing them. Then I gathered all of my things after organizing my inventory, and I took one last look at everything I had built before I took on the dragon. And I may have also smacked a ton of mobs in the XP farm while I was at it, and boy did this produce hella XP. I really need a good sword in the future to wipe out these mobs faster. Anyways, I made my way downtown, I, I mean, I made my way to the end portal very over prepared, and I quickly built a bit of a platform around it for some extra safety, and I added the apparently only four eyes of ender that were needed, and now I was ready. I looked into the portal, and I immediately jumped in, and the very second that I got into the end, I was a very ready boy. I quickly ender pearled my way onto the main island, and I made quick work of that dragon. Cue the music. And like I said, I had made quick work of the dragon. Not being in hardcore made this fight feel so much different, and it felt like I hit the dragon like an absolute tank. Either way, I was now victorious, and if I do 200 days in the future, I can now go end city hunting. So after the dragon was done, I gathered all of the XP, and unfortunately, I was just a little bit short of those beautiful 69 levels, but that was okay because I did end up taking the dragon egg as a trophy that I will probably never touch in the future, let's be honest. I found myself back home and wow, was there so much to do. I took a look at my tools and armor and I remembered just how broke I truly was. But that was okay because I now had access to the end and I was going to skip through the entire process of trading for good enchantments by scamming shulkers out of their hard earned goods instead. So I grabbed the supplies to craft myself an ender chest and I made two for extra storage inside the end, which I was definitely going to need because look at all these extra supplies that I was going to bring. I have the cows from the movie Barnyard, some wood, extra water buckets in case mine glitches again, which it probably will, always does, and other random items that I was going to need. And now that I had all of that inside the chest, I filled up my inventory with as many blocks as I could that I literally would never build with. And boy, can I not wait to make me some cursed bridges. Anyways, now that I had every Everything I was going to need in the end, I headed over to the portal, and before jumping in, I was quickly distracted by my overflowing mob farm. I low-key forgot just how overpowered these things were in Skyblock World.
world. So, like any man of culture would, I sat there smacking these boys down to the Doom Dimension until I hit level 69, the perfect way to begin a 100 days. So now that I had the haha -ha funny number of levels, I went into the middle dome to my portal, and I jumped in. Except now that I was here, I remembered that I should probably bring fireworks and supplies, so that way I could enchant my first elytra to streamline the looting process. So I went back to the center portal, and I jumped in, and I may have ended up spending the rest of the night making fireworks and grinding more mobs at the mob farm for tons of gunpowder. And while I was doing this, I became so tired of this terribly slow axe that I needed a new sword. So I went over to the chest to get some diamonds for the sword, and I found the convenient three shulker shells from the last 100 days that I just kind of threw in here, thinking that I would use for something, and I kind of just left them. But that's okay, because this works out in the end, no pun intended, because I now had a shulker box that I could use for more storage that I desperately was going to need. So, after getting the supplies from the chest, I made myself a sword, and I made this pretty dumb decision. I actually enchanted it, hoping for a god roll, and instead, I got some garbage, I got more garbage, I got super garbage, I got Adam Sandler, and I got garbage! My enchantments did not like me, and I quickly got to see all 69 of those sweet levels drain before my eyes. What a mediocre start to the first day. On day 202, I kept rerolling my sword enchantments until I finally got a good roll with looting three on. It. Except that actually didn't happen. Instead, I ended up wasting most of my levels on a sharpness 4 knockback 2 sword. But at the end of the day, this still kind of worked just fine, so I spent a little bit of time wiping out some mobs in the farm with my brand new sword, and I ended up with almost another stack of gunpowder, which would make three more stacks of tier 1 rockets. Nice. And now the only things left that I needed to bring with me to the end was an Unbreaking 3 book, a mending book, and a brand new anvil that I could use to make my alliance usable. However, like I said before, I am broke. So I needed 22 more emeralds for a mending book, and the only way I could get on breaking three was by enchanting books, which you probably know from my sword just how lucky I am with that. So I continued the endless cycle of killing mob grinder mobs, grinding enchantments off of their gear drops, and enchanting books in the hopes of not getting smacked in the face by Aaron Jesus himself. And during this process, I also started trading all of the rotten flesh that I was getting to that annoying cleric that broke into my home and was a squatter. Overall, this process took all of the night until literally sunrise, when I finally got an Unbreaking 3 book. I really can't script it like this, man. It was like the game was toying with me. On day 303, now that I had my Unbreaking 3 book, all I now needed was mending. So I took my diamond sword over to the bamboo farm to shave off a couple of years from its life. I mean, just, just look at its durability, man. It's, it's so bad. So after eliminating half of my sword's lifespan, I collected all of the bamboo and I converted them to sticks to to trade with my Fletchers for the remaining emeralds that I was going to need for that sweet mending book. And now that I had my book, I grabbed some of my very limited iron and I made an anvil and I combined the two together and threw everything into a shulker box so I was now finally ready to raid the end. So I collected all of my things and I jumped down to the portal and I leaped in. And after getting here, I quickly made my way over to the Farlands portal, which I built my way up to, and instead of wasting my only Ender Pearl, for now, I made a trapdoor instead, and I bonked myself in the head to climb into the portal. And you probably guessed where this was going. I spawned in the middle of nowhere with no end cities to be seen. Which, realistically, I mean, come on. I, I figured this was gonna happen because my luck with end spawns was garbage. And speaking of garbage, this place was it, because I spent the next three days straight until day 206, running around the end, bridging non-stop with absolutely nothing in sight. Unless you count finding two more of those portal beacons, which are technically less common than the actual cities, which was kind of just a slap in the face, but anyways, this process sucked because there were so many gaps in between these islands, and I quickly exhausted my mismatched piles of blocks, and I now had to begin collecting endstone anytime I wanted to go anywhere. That is, until day 206, when I finally found not one, not two, but three end cities all clustered near each other. Finally! I have been going so far 
in the end. So I quickly ran up to them in excitement, and of course, I was now out of endstone again, so I had to first mine some more before I could bridge my way across. And once I finally got close enough to the biggest looking end city, it ended up not having an end ship. So it looks like I was not going to be a flyboy anytime soon. And to top it all off, I now needed to collect even more resources to build my way across another gap just to get to that end city. Things were going well. On day 207, I had finally bridged over and I was ready to take on the end city for some loot and shulkers. That is, until I learned how this was a baby end tower because there was no loot rooms and there was barely any shulkers. However, this didn't stop me from 1v1ing the shulkers that were there with the old bow in the offhand treatment even though I didn't have looting which basically made doing that pointless. You know what? I don't want to talk about it. Anyways, after quickly dismantling this miniature society, I came out of there with a whopping two shulker shells. I was not living like Larry today. It was safe to say that I was a very bummed out person. So I took my frustration out on the locals. And for some reason, none of these guys were aggroing. They just kind of stood there and took every slice from my sword. It looks like I may have stumbled upon a hidden tribe of masochist endermen. And you'd be thinking, oh, they're not fighting back, so he's not going to keep attacking them, right? Well, you'd be wrong, because it did not stop me from stealing the pearls from them so I could keep bridging much easier. Especially since at this point, I was tired of breaking endstone. So after beating up all those endermen and taking their pearls, I ender pearled myself across this gap and I made my way over to this even worse end city. It was abysmally small and there were only three shulkers and one of the three actually dropped me a shell. So far, my journey in the end has been a rough one. On the beginning of day 208, I left that dump in the dust because there was still one more end tower that I had seen in the distance that I haven't yet explored. So I began heading in the direction that I thought I had seen it in and there ended up being nothing over here. So as I began to get very nervous, I cranked my render distance up to 64 and not only did I see the tower I was looking for, but right next to it on its right side was a massive end city with an end ship baby. I was finally going to get myself in Elytra so I could conquer the end. So I started running towards the larger, more relevant end city because it was way cooler and obviously far superior, but I ended up having to run by the small one first anyways. So I figured, you know, why not take it on? So I quickly yeeted the two shulkers downstairs and I floated my way up Minecraft's equivalent to the Pokemon League because I wiped the floor with every single person here. And I had finally found my first loot room and even subpar loot in the end still ended up being kind of crazy because I found myself a diamond chess piece with unbreaking three and a curse. But I did also find this perfect god pickaxe with efficiency five, unbreaking three, and mending. Now the only thing left that I needed for that pickaxe was fortune three, and I had myself a god tier silk touch pickaxe and a fortune pickaxe. And to add the icing to this diamond loot cake, I also found 15 more iron ingots, which should help hold me off until I finally find a place to build an iron farm. Anyways, I had now finished this whole tower, and I had gotten four more shulker shells to add Add to my collection. And now that I was done here, it was on to that massive tower that ended up being surprisingly easy to get to. And this place was stacked. I made my way up the first small loot room and I control alt deleted all of the shulkers here before indefinitely borrowing all of their life savings. And honestly, these guys didn't have much, but I did get myself an efficiency four diamond pickaxe and some more free iron. And of course, while I was at it, I stole their ender chest because I mean, who do you think I am? A free ender chest is free real estate. Anyways, after robbing those guys blind, I continued my way up the towers while one by one unboxing each of these weird purple Christmas gifts. Until I landed my way into loot room number two and inside one of the chests was an unbreaking three fire protection four diamond chest piece some other loot and free gold and not to mention another free ender chest for the next two days straight days 209 through 210 i continued cleaning this place out of both shulker shells and loot and after finishing up all of the loot rooms i grabbed myself a slow falling potion as a precaution and i nerd pulled my way over to the end ship after sniping away both of the shulkers that were low-key spawn camping me and after making my way inside of the end ship i was greeted by some more pacifist and or masochist Enderman, I guess. Because I punched one in the face by accident because he startled me, and nobody did a single thing about it. I guess Minecraft really is like real life. So after making my way past those Endermen and killing the Shulker in the middle, I stole both of the chests 
full of some more super OP loot. And after that, I took the coveted Elytra and it was now official. I was now a gamer who could fly. So I pulled out my anvil and I popped my Unbreaking 3 mending book onto the Elytra and I named it RGB Gaming Wings because you're not a gamer unless everything you own is RGB. And if you're wondering, I don't make the rules, I just follow them. When it comes to RGB, I guess, nothing else. Anyways, now that the end ship's loot was now my loot, I spent the rest of day 210 cleaning up loose ends around the end city until I was finally ready to go. So I organized all of my loot into the two shulkers that I had and I grabbed myself some fireworks and I set off with my brand new RGB gaming elytra that Santa had gotten me for Christmas. On day 211, after flying for only a couple of minutes, I found the perfect area to end off my looting excursion. There was another end city with an end ship that had a nearby portal back to end spawn. And on its right, there was a second end city that was ripe for the looting. So the very first thing I did was fly my way onto the end ship and run inside and yeet the shulker into oblivion. And inside the very first chest was a protection for mending helmet, which was perfect to replace the garbage one that I had been wearing. And if you're thinking that that's the perfect drop, it gets better because the second chest had another helmet with most of the other enchantments that this one was conveniently missing. So I whipped out ye old anvil and I combined the two for protection for mending aqua infinity and unbreaking three. I was becoming beefier by the second. So now that I had a second elytra and my brand new hat, I went to the top of the ship for the dragon head and I entered speedrun mode because at this point I was kind of getting tired of the end. So to make things faster, I quickly flew over the middle top loot room and I yoinked all of the expensive loot that was inside of both of the chests and I sat there sniping out each of the shulkers from down below. And now that the middle area was cleared, I was feeling very lazy and efficient. So I flew back outside and onto the second loot room where I saw another big end city in the distance with another end ship. I mean, I was excited about it, but at this point, I now had three more end cities to loot. And if you know anything about me, I cannot resist loot in the end. Or, I mean, loot anywhere because I'm a hoarder. So I quickly finished off the three towers in this end city and I flew off towards the closest small one so I could quickly borrow all of their worldly possessions and piece my way out of there. On day 212 after finishing the last end city, the speed run was still on. I quickly flew over to the end ship and on the way there, there was another end city. At this point, this is going to be a hundred days in one block skyblocks end dimension. Anyways, after landing on the end ship, I ran inside and I hadoukened the shulker guard. Then I crammed all of the loot from the two chests aggressively into my thick with 10 C's inventory and I yoinked myself another Gucci Elytra. And after that, I sped run through the rest of this surprisingly uninteresting end city. And now all I had left to loot was the tiny one for shulker shells, right? Well, if you thought that was the case, you'd be very wrong because the second I landed on top of this end city, two more massive end cities with two more end ships rendered in the distance behind it. So at this point, it seemed like I was reverse cursed. I spent so much time not finding any end cities and now they will not leave me alone. So being the hoarder that I am, I couldn't resist looting all three of these remaining end cities. And overall, it took me until the end of day 15 and I had so 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 much loot that I was officially done looting the end But not before I accidentally flew into the ground way too fast and I popped a totem of undying Which not gonna lie is a super embarrassing way to lose a totem Just like the hardcore series where I lost one by drinking milk with no armor on near guardians doesn't get much worse than that. Anyways, after I finished looting every end city in sight and I was done looking for more and I may have lost a totem, I flew through the nearby portal and I went back into the main end portal so I could finally go back home. And on day 216, after getting back, I placed out a bunch of chests in the middle of my house so I could show off the sheer mass of loot that I brought back from this mega loot excursion. Overall, I came back with 10 emeralds, a whopping 37 diamonds, 94 more gold, 127 iron, an absolute ton of shulker boxes, including enough shells to make 19 more, if I had the wood, and five new elytras. And on top of that, I ended up with this entire chest full of crazy enchanted diamond armors, diamond tools, and diamond weapons. And it doesn't end there because to finish it off, I 
also stole all of the horse armors and this crazy amount of enchanted iron gear just so I could steal all of the XP from it, which to be honest, probably was not worth it in the slightest. But you know what? I don't care because I have all of this loot now and you don't. So stop judging me. Anyways, now that I was home and I got to show off all of my new loot, I decided to play cleanup for the rest of the day. The first thing that I did was pay a nice visit to my mob farm for some more drops and more of that juicy XP. And after that, I slowly emptied out my new loot into their respective homes. And now my diamond armor and tool chests all had the right items in their item frames. And I had a brand new spot to store my elytras and my shulker boxes. And now that those chests were cleaned out and organized, I spent the rest of the day grindstoning all of the iron stuff so I could smelt them into some more measly iron. Because until I do get that iron farm working, every piece of iron counts. On day 117, I moved the soul sand that I had with my singular nether wart because for some reason, they absolutely refused to grow. And I needed myself some more potions of weakness that I was going to use to torture my villagers. So if I can't grow it, then I was going to do the next best Thing. So I grabbed a bunch of random blocks from my chests that I probably wasn't going to build with anyways and I made my way back to the nether so I could build yet another cursed bridge. However, this time I was headed over to the nether fortress from the first 100 days. And of course, while doing this, I had yet another surprise visitor that I quickly sent to the Shadow Realm. His cousin Stepgast will be super excited to meet him once again. And after that incident was over with, I went back across the bridge and placed torches for some weird reason. And while I was doing it, Stepgast's cousin's brother stopped by for a family reunion. But I whipped out my trusty Uno reverse card and I slammed the door in his face. Because I was not in the mood for solicitors. Because I was on a mission. Anyways, once that small family debacle was over, I made my way into the nether fortress. And this place was god tier. Upon entering, I was greeted by a metric ton of wither skeletons. Because this place was located in a soul sand valley. The perfect biome for a wither skeleton farm. Which means that I now had a renewable source of coal and I could farm any and all wither skulls for more of those juicy beacons. However, since I didn't have any looting on my sword, none of these guys were kind enough to drop their skulls for me. Which is kind of a weird sentence if you think about it. But that was okay because while exploring the fortress, I stole any and all quartz and gold that I found and I did manage to find two brand new blaze spawners that were ripe for the future farming. And overall, I explored around this place until about day 120, and I found a decent amount of loot here. I kept running into chests that had gold, random pieces of armor, and horse armor inside, and I found two of those staircase areas that were full of nether wart that I, of course, stole. I mean, I mean, borrowed. There we go. And now that I had 33 new nether warts and a bunch of other devious licks, it was time to leave the nether a success. On day 121, now that I had the supplies I needed to begin tormenting more villagers, I built a small dark room near their trade stalls that I was going to use to get some zombies. And while I was waiting for things to spawn inside of there, I decided to go back and pay a visit to my mob grinder, which was more crazy than a Karen in a target. I sat here cleaning up mobs for a couple of minutes until a zombie villager spawned that I was going to try and save. Keyword try, because once I spoke to it, it asked if he could talk to my manager. So he just disappeared, I don't know what happened to him. Anyways, after enough time had passed, I headed back to the dark room, and I was greeted by a pile of creepers and a skeleton wearing some pretty nice drip. And I accidentally turned this place into a bat shooting gallery. If only bats were useful. So with that failure behind me, I kept refreshing the spawns inside of the room and I kept getting more and more creepers. And since my mob farm kept going non-stop, I had to keep cleaning it out to clear the mob count because it would max out and nothing would spawn at all. That is, until I finally got lucky with a couple of zombies spawning in. So I placed down a boat and I broke them out and this was an absolute struggle because this sus creeper hopped inside of the boat and I struggled to get him out without killing any of the zombies. Which, unfortunately, I had to sacrifice one of. Because creepers gotta creep. Anyways, now that I have my boat zombie, I rode him over to the Fletcher, and the guy got so scared that he ran straight into the boat, which further proves to me that the villagers like being treated like this. Trust me, they love it. 
And after this, a second zombie spawned in that I didn't really have another boat for, and I didn't want any of the golems to get him, so I struggled to trap him back inside of the dark room until I finally got him in there, and I brought him a brand new boat that I plopped him in, and my second Fletcher was so excited to see his new best friend that he also jumped in. And by the time this day was over, I now had two new zombie villagers, and I turned this place into a mess so no iron golems could walk in here and wreck all of my hard work. On day 122, I gathered all of the resources for my potions of weakness, and I then realized that I didn't even need the nether wart, which for some reason, always make this mistake. But, I mean, it kind of works out, because now I had it for when I needed it, I guess. And I got to visit the cool nether fortress that got me all those wither skulls. So now that I had everything that I needed, I crafted a bunch of fermented spider eyes, and I brewed myself three potions of weakness, and I walked in on the villagers hanging out with their new skeleton friend that I had no clue how we got here. But that's okay, because as the great fit MC would say, clown down. And now that that was over with, I yoinked my first potion of weakness in the middle of them, and I fed them their golden apples. Or at least that's what would have happened if I didn't miss one of them with a potion and have to waste a second one. But yeah, these guys were now on their way to being one stick trade boys, just like my OG hardcore world. You will be missed 07s in the chat. Anyways, now that I was stuck waiting for these guys to cure, it was time to mass brew more potions of weakness. And while I was doing this, I got the achievement Cure Doctor, which meant only one thing. My villagers were now cured for the very first time, and both of their stick trades were down to 26, which wasn't great, but definitely was a good start. To end off this day, I went back to my mom farm to smack some more dudes in the face while waiting for them to become infected once again. And after they were zombified, I threw another potion at them and I cured them for a second time. On day 123, the first thing I did was go back to check on my villagers once more, yeet another potion of anti-strength at their faces, and stuff them like Thanksgiving turkeys with golden apples. And at this point, it had been a little bit of time since I had been inside of this world, so I didn't really know which cure I was on. In my notes, I actually wrote I would be lying if I didn't say I lost track. But now that I'm reading back on it, this ended up being cure number three, and I was once again stuck waiting on the villagers. So with all that time that I had on my hands, I thought it was finally time that I built them their very own trading hall. However, I was going to need more space to do this. Much more space. Because I do not build small structures. So it was back to the stone generator where I AFK farmed stone for the rest of the day and I ended up with a pretty good haul overall. I got a whole ton of stone for my silk touch pickaxe and the occasional cobblestone from... Honestly, I have no clue why they spawn, but you know what? Free cobble is never bad. And now that I had all of this stone, I could make myself a brand new non-flammable platform, which that last part is very important because you never know in these worlds. On day 124, I began the day by paying yet another of many future visits to my infected villagers, and this place had become a party. There was a random zombie just hanging out along with the two new villager chads, who were strong and independent and apparently didn't need no iron golems, because they were just looking at these zombies in the face. And as much as I wanted to kill them, I couldn't risk ruining my trades, and I didn't really have any oak wood to replace any floor that I would break to banish them down into the void. So instead, I just cured both of my villagers once more, while totally not missing the first potion, because I never miss. And after this, I was going to go back out and begin building the brand new platform for my trading hall. However, I was quickly distracted by grinding at the mob farm some more, and checking back on my villagers somehow multiplied once again. There were now three zombie villagers that I have zero clue where they came from, but I guess the more the merrier, right? So I made some more boats and I plopped these guys inside so I could begin farming them as well. But things didn't end here because more and more villagers kept pouring in and turning into zombies. And there was no place for these guys to have been escaping from. At least not at this speed. So I had zero clue what was going on. But I was now ready to make the platform for my villager trading hall. And if you know me, like I said earlier, I do not build small things. Overall, this platform took about 60 stacks of stone, and it took me until day 128 to build. And of course, I kept running out of stone, so I had to AFK for more at the Deluxe Stone Farm, and at this point, my poor pickaxe wasn't exactly taking it so well. But by the time it was the night of day 128, the platform was pretty much done, and also full of mobs because I may have forgotten to light up the rest of it. 
So I had this big brain idea to try and kill all the mobs. You know, I thought, you know, I'd clear out myself, get some more XP, get some more loot. So I sat back sniping them and they just kept multiplying faster than I could even take them out. So I said, screw it. And I kind of just called it a night, but not before shooting this little baby Phil's zombie in the face. Imagine losing a hardcore world to that. On the morning of day 129, I went outside to check on the platform full of mobs and big surprise, it was still chaos. But little did these mobs know, I was like Shadow the Hedgehog because chaos control. I sniped each and every one of their remaining boys out of existence. And now that my platform was clear, before adding the finishing touches, I went back over to my zombie Fletchers for one more yeet and a quick cure. And while doing this, I used up my last two golden apples. But luckily, I had just enough gold to craft 16 more. And after making those golden apples, I was beginning to realize that gold was going to become an issue very soon. And the only real way I could get it in this world was from the nether. So maybe in the near future, I was going to end up making myself a gold farm somewhere on top of the nether roof. But anyways, now that the platform was clean and the villagers were once again cured, I added the final part to the platform and I finally lit it all up with torches so there would be no more incidents. And after that, I spent the rest of the night growing and chopping down super spruce trees for all of the wood that I was going to need for this brand new villager trading hall. Which, may I add, with efficiency 4, was so much better than in the last 100 days. I think I spent like a solid 10% of that entire video just chopping wood. Crazy. On day 130, now that the platform was complete and I had most of the resources that I was going to need to at least begin my villager prison, I spent the entire day doing exactly that. I began by placing out spruce logs, stone bricks, and spruce wooden planks around the perimeters of the platform to begin the walls that were going to make up this massive structure. And after they were all up, I began building the outline for my villager breeder that was going to be the center of this building. So that way, whenever I needed more villagers, I wasn't going to have to move them super far. And so far, things were going really well, except during this process, I kind of made the structure a little off center. And I was not having that. So I spent the rest of the night, unfortunately, fixing it. The next day, day 131 was an adventure to say the least. I started the day out by finishing my little off-center issue and I added the fences around the middle area that was going to become the farm. And after that, I placed all of the dirt in the center and I surrounded it by a spruce wood floor for the beds with one extra space in between the middle so that way whenever they got up from each day, they wouldn't jump on and destroy the crops. And now that I had that, I added the water to the center, plopped a composter on top, and I tilled all of the soil, so we were now ready to move in the villagers. And I had a plan. Since the sun was going down, all of these guys were going to become desperate for places to sleep. So I stole all of their beds and I put them in the new villager breeder. So that way they would all just move over here, or at least that was the plan. And I was very wrong, because this ended up being an absolute pain in the butt, no pun intended stole all of their beds and they kept fighting over which ones were still left until I finally managed to break the last one through this pile of villagers while also definitely not punching one by accident. Anyways, at this point, no one seemed interested in my offer to move, so I came up with a brilliant diamond of a plan and I used one of the beds to slowly lure each and every one of them out of their pen until they were close enough to the new beds and this ended up looking absolutely hilarious. The mass villager exodus was upon us because this took all night long and the sun was now coming up and there may have been stragglers literally everywhere. But it was all good because instead of getting them all the way over to their new home, I kind of just sacrificed them to the always hungry void instead. And no, I'm not sorry for it. On day 132, I walked over to my villager breeder and I realized that I had built it wrong. I meant to have the full inside area be even with the floor on the outside because that way the beds weren't that high up and the villagers wouldn't escape. However, since I built it this way, half of the villagers escaped the second that it turned daytime, which made all of that hard work I did last night basically pointless. So yeah, I pretty much wasted the entire day one by one replacing the blocks without dropping any more villagers into the void. And let me just say, this was a absolute pain. And unfortunately, this time, there was no pun intended. 
Overall, by the time I finished fixing the villager breeder, it was already nighttime, so I figured I would go check on the villagers one more time before I go to bed, and there were even more mobs that spawned down here, and I had no clue where they were spawning from, because everything should have been properly lit up. But to be honest, I was done with today, so I placed down a couple of torches, just in case, and I cured both of these guys once more before just going to bed. On day 133, I woke up and went back to the villagers where I waited until they finally cured. And at this point, something about their prices was very off. For the last three cures, their prices went up to 26 emeralds, and they've not changed since. And I only punched one villager by accident, and he was way far away. So there's no way they could have talked to each other. So at this point, I was kind of just at a loss. I had already used tons of gold and potions, and I still didn't have my infinite source of emeralds. But anyways, today I was going to continue working on my villager trading hall, and hopefully when I get back to them, maybe they'll be fixed. So the first thing I did was gather together my spruce wood and the stone bricks, and I began transforming the right side wing into villager storage. And this area now fitted up to 32 villagers, because I gave them each one space to live because it turns out they don't need beds to refresh their trades, so their quality of life just got yet another downgrade. And while I was working on this area, I had another wandering simp visit me, and this man had sand for sale, which I was in desperate need of, because there's no way to get sand in this world efficiently, and I like glass, what can I say? So I bought myself a cool stack before then yeeting the three of them down to their doom, which, to be honest, I enjoyed way more than I probably should have. Anyways, to end off this night, I went back for the millionth time to check on those villagers, and they had cured once again with no new discounts. So it was looking like I had to cut my losses at this point and restart fresh with a bunch of new villagers. Which was great, because I totally was made of gold. I had infinite gold in this world. It was no problem. And that totally wasn't sarcasm. So on day 134, I left my house to see how the new villager trading hall looked, and even though it was nowhere near completion, I knew that it was going to turn out great. But first, I really needed to work on my tools, because most of them were almost broken, and they didn't even have mending. And since my two stick boys were failing me, I was stuck smacking bamboo with stone swords once again for the beautiful emeralds that I was going to need. And during this process, I burned through about nine swords, but it did end up paying off because I got about two inventories worth of sticks to trade with my now super limited Fletchers. So at this point, things were at an all time slow. So I said, screw it. And I cured the broken ones one last time and I dispatched their zombies back to whence they came. And this time, I kind of just sat here and waited for them to cure, just in case another zombie came along. And once they cured, their trades decided to drop like they probably should have been. Which really feels like the game was trolling me at this point, to be honest. But that was okay, because I did some beautiful capitalism with the two, and their trades ended up dropping even further. Which kind of gave me an idea, because sometimes trading with villagers will affect their trades in combination with curing them. And since I haven't really been trading with anyone, maybe they were just being salty gamers. Either way, I don't really know, but now I had enough emeralds for a whole bunch of mending books for my gear. So in a way, you could call today a success, just barely. On day 135, I went back to the villagers and I traded the remaining string that I had for some more beautiful emeralds and I bought as many mending books as I could to begin fixing up my gear. I then grabbed my anvil and plopped it down and I added mending to Choppy Toppy, then to the pickaxe which I renamed Smooth Criminal because honestly that's a pretty hilarious name that's perfectly fitting for a silk touch pick. And after that, I added mending to my mediocre sword just for now, and I named it Hinokami Kagura as a reference to both an anime and the sword from my Arlcraft 100 Days video. That, by the way, I would highly recommend you go and watch after this if you haven't already. Also, let me know in the comments down below if you know which anime this sword name is from. Anyways, I now only had one more mending book left, so I added it to my pretty banged up diamond chest piece that had protection 4 and I'm breaking 3. And at this point, I couldn't really think of a good name for it, so I kind of just left it. But either way, now everything had mending except for my pants, and I spent the rest of the day grinding away levels at the mob farm, and because so many different pieces of gear were being massively repaired at the same time, I basically gained no experience whatsoever while doing this. Also, I'd just like to throw this in here, while waiting for the mobs to spawn, I have no clue why I did this, 
but I finally decided to go over and delete Fernando the Wandering Trader from existence. This guy has been chilling in my old villager pen since the very beginning of this world, and to be honest, I don't know why I did this. I guess I just was tired of hearing him constantly drinking potions and slurping obnoxiously every single night. So I did something about it. What is he gonna do? Sue me from the grave? Anyways, after taking care of Fernando, I spent the rest of the night repairing the remainder of my tools and melting more iron golems with lava because for some reason they had become an infestation that loved to hang out on top of my house. If only I could do that to my neighbors in real life. On day 136, I was going to continue working on my villager trading hall. However, I needed glass for it and way more than I could make until I had a massive brain idea. So I grabbed myself a bucket of water, some fence and blocks and I went down to the platform by my end portal because I was going to use this thing to duplicate sand. Because pro tip, if you place fences under an end portal and drop blocks with gravity such as gravel or sand into the portal, they will break before entering and they will duplicate. So after using the water bucket to add fences underneath, I dropped a little over half of the sand inside to test it out and I jumped inside the portal where I was ambushed by this sussy witch that I quickly pushed off the edge of this obsidian platform along with this annoying trader and this poor zombie horse. I'm sorry zombie horse. Anyways, after checking my inventory, I indeed did duplicate all of the sand that I had dropped in. And my new glass business was now in full swing. So I left through the main end portal and I spent the rest of this day dropping more sand into the portal and retrieving it back from the end. And I didn't keep going all night because within no time, I already had amassed 14 stacks of duped sand. My sand issues were officially over. So to celebrate, I was back to cleaning up those pesky iron golems with lava buckets, and I now had it down to a science. By the time the sun was rising, I had earned myself 27 more iron ingots. On day 137, I started off the day by finally moving our two Fletcher friends back into their cubbies and freeing them from their boats so we could do some more capitalism. And I traded a full stack of string for tons of juicy emeralds. And at this point, these guys were now actively refreshing their trades. And you know what? 20 sticks per trade isn't perfect, but it's definitely better than what it was before. Anyways, I now had enough emeralds to buy the remaining mending book that I needed for my leggings. And I bought an extra so that way he could level up because I needed more name tags so I could name all of my brand new mob friends. But for now I had what I needed so I went back to my chest full of leggings to look for an easy way to get protection for before adding mending. And I made this very expensive decision to waste two additional protection to unbreaking three leggings to combine them all together for unbreaking three in protection four. And now that I had that, I gave them mending and I came up with a perfect name Apple Bottom Jeans. And while I was on my naming A game, I renamed my boots into Heelys because they were far superior to those pathetic Yeezys that everyone always names their boots. Why didn't I name them boots with the fur to match the leggings? Couldn't give you an answer for that. I might end up changing them in the future. We'll see. But for now, I was going to be the cool kid on the playground being yelled at by the teachers rolling around on my brand new pair of Heelys. A cool kid that had full mending, prot 4, and unbreaking 3 armor, may I also add. Now that my armor was mostly complete and I had the sand for glass, I now needed a ton of wood for building. And luckily, since I had the nether, I could use lava to smelt all of the glass instead of wasting more of the wood on charcoal. So I began planting more super trees and harvesting them for spruce wood until I remembered something that I meant to do literally forever ago. So I took some of the wood and I made chests and hoppers with the freshly borrowed iron and I added them underneath the mob farm so now all of the drops that dropped from entity cramming deaths could now be saved. Plus I now didn't have to clean out my inventory literally every single time I used the thing. So that was pretty good. Anyways now that my drops were no longer being wasted I spent the rest of the night until sunrise harvesting spruce wood and I ended up with exactly eight stacks which to be honest wasn't really a lot for what I needed but it would do for now. On day 138, I used the remaining 
borrowed iron that was generously donated by those iron golems to make three new iron buckets and I traveled back to the nether in search of some easy lava. I put on my elytra and I flew on down and grabbed myself three more buckets for easy furnace fuel which to be honest I just now thought of which is kind of embarrassing. So after this painless trip, no pun intended, I flew back up to the portal and I went back to my construction site where I placed out four furnaces each with their own bucket of lava and a stack of sand so I could start amassing my glass army while I was working on the trading hall. And I spent the rest of the night working on the entrance that I had already planned out in a creative world and things were going pretty well. This place overall was going to look so good. That is until I was interrupted by some flying sky demons who just so happened to be my favorite Pokemon because they were basically Zubats. They were everywhere and anywhere and insanely annoying. So I took one last look at my progress and I went to sleep before the sun rose because I was tired of dealing with these guys every day. On day 139, I was back to working on the front entrance. I started the day off by mirroring the top part from the left side to the right, which definitely sounds easy, but it was not in the slightest. However, after figuring that out, I filled in all of the glass and I was very happy so far. However, I was growing tired of the terrifying gaps to the void that were in between my house and the villager's house. And I knew exactly what I wanted to go there. I wanted it to be a miniature garden area with grass, plants, trees, and other nature. So this place looked a little less stone and wooden. So I grabbed all of my remaining dirt and I began filling it in until the inevitable happened. I ran out of dirt. So I placed one grass block down so it would continue to spread while I got more and I went over to do something terrifying. I traveled back to my old villager breeder and I broke the block under the water and I very, very, very carefully began building a platform underneath so that way I could collect all of the dirt that I placed here. And this process never isn't scary. So just in case I had my elytra on because we are very, very close to the void and I did not want to lose all of this hard work that I had done. If I fell down here now, even with the fireworks, I was going to have to be Lightning McQueen levels of fast to escape death. But anyways, this process had my palms M&M levels of sweaty and I had to go super slow. So it ended up taking all night, which is pretty sad when you think about it. But as Tommy Pickles from Rugrats always says, a baby's got to do what a baby's got to do, but just replace baby with like Minecraft or I guess. On day 140, I spent most of the day doing pretty much the same thing as yesterday. As sad as it is, just getting all of that dirt back took this long. And now this area looked like some sketchy back alley Pokemon arena like in Detective Pikachu. But I guess that was okay for now because it was not going to be there for much longer. Anyways, after removing all of that dirt, I evicted the last two villagers from living and I finished up the dirt patch next to my house that was quickly turning into grass. So now that I had some extra dirt, I began filling in the gap on the other side as well. So that way this whole area was just going to look a lot nicer and it was going to be a lot safer. And now that the danger of that gap is gone. I spent the rest of the night adding additional touches to my pyramid because by the time these 100 days were over, I wanted there to be some kind of theme for all of the buildings, especially because as they were now, they were way too plain looking. So I continued working on it through the night and by the time it was sunrise, this is how far I had gotten. At this point, I was still pretty unsure how I felt about it. I mean, it was very unfinished, but at the same time, I'm also very, very indecisive. If I was a character from Demon Slayer, I would probably be Zenitsu. For days 141 through 148, I began grinding out the process of finishing this colossal trading hall. And honestly, I think I bit off way too much here. I had to keep chopping down more super trees to fuel the pure amount of wood that I was using, and building the roof of this thing was an awful process to say the least. I started out by adding some long wooden beams over the center room that were going to act as border for the massive sunroof this place was going to have, so that way there was a lot of natural light inside. And after finishing those, I finished up the first wing worth of villager slots, and I moved on to begin building the second. And after finishing up the inside part of the second hall of villagers, I tested out an idea that I had for different roof styles over each of the three trading areas. After taking a quick flight overhead with my elytra, it actually turned out really, really good which meant that I now had to mirror it over to the other side and make a slightly different version of it for the back section of villagers. And this place would be ready to start my booming Emerald Empire. 
However, the back area had a lot more space, so I designed it a bit differently with three different center boxes of villager trade spots, which totaled out to be enough space for an additional 62 villager traders, which is probably overkill plus ultra, but I mean, maybe one day I'll maybe use all these villagers? You never really know, although in a one block skyblock world, probably not. But either way, the only thing left for me to do with this massive structure was to finish the roof over the back area and add some glass to the center, and then we would finally be done with this nightmare. On day 149, instead of doing exactly what I just said, I was back to messing around with my zombie villagers because, you know, I like emeralds, and I wanted more. And speaking of emeralds, while I was here, I traded away all of the string that I had been getting from the mob farm for some more juicy emeralds that I used to get some more decadent lanterns, which if you didn't know are far superior to plain old gross icky torches. So now that I had more lanterns, I built up with stone and I placed them along with chains in front of each of the front windows for the villager trading hall. So that way there would be a little extra light in the front and honestly, lanterns just look really nice for decoration. Let me know in the comments below if you guys love lanterns or if you prefer gross icky torches. Anyways, after this I spent the rest of the night testing out other ways to make the entrance look much nicer. I began by smelting lots of clay so that way I could make some clay pots and I tested them out on the slabs on the left side of the building with saplings and flowers inside so they were kind of like those pots that you hang under windows. And honestly, I ended up liking these a lot. They looked really nice. So I popped a bunch more clay into the furnaces, and while I was waiting for them to smelt, I planted some more oak trees in the grass field near my house, so that way I could use my shears to get lots of oak leaves that I could use for another finishing touch to the front of this villager trading hall. And after getting the leaves from the once proud oak tree, I added them to the areas under each set of hanging flower pots to act as some kind of bushes, and now, this place was looking great. I always say it looks good, but it looks great now. So after all the leaves were placed out, I crafted the remaining pots for the opposite side, and I placed them all down on the windowsills symmetrically to the other side, and I ended up being very happy with how this place turned out. On day 150, I crafted myself two fletching tables for the two brand new zombie villager friends, and I headed back to pay them a friendly visit where I cured them both, and this time, I sat here waiting until they turned back to normal, so that way, I could place down the fletching tables and test their trades for the first time. And not too long after waiting, the first guy cured and ended up having a 20 emerald stick trade, which was not that bad. So I leveled him up a bunch to lock in his profession since this sometimes speeds up their discount process. And I left the two down there to be tormented once more because today I was going on another journey to the nether. But this time, I was after gold, and tons of it. So I went back to my chest to grab some of the little gold that I had left, and some netherite scraps, and some ancient debris that I could cook in a furnace, so I could make my very first piece of netherite that I was going to use to craft a lodestone. In fact, this is going to be the first lodestone ever in this world. And you may be asking, why do I need a lodestone? Well, if you don't know, lodestones are literally a god tier block in Minecraft. I was going to place it in the nether, and use a compass to right click, it so I could always find my way back home even though the nether is a massive jungle of torture. So now that I had myself a way back home, I spent the rest of the night brewing some potions of fire resistance just in case I had some sad lava incident and I was organizing all of my supplies into a shulker box. And while I was at it, I also filled up my entire ender chest with more shulker boxes just in case I found anything crazy that I wanted to loot, which I mean, let's be honest, I probably was going to find a lot of loot. I just, I just know how to sniff it out and I cannot resist loot. I like loot. As Mr. Krabs once said, I like money. Anyways, now that everything was ready to go, I cured both of my villagers one more time and I grabbed a ton of sticks to trade with them and I waited until they were cured again to see if their trades were actually improving unlike those last two ungrateful guys. And after the first one had cured, his trades were now down to 12, which was fantastic. My trading drought was finally over, so I traded him some string to level him up, and he was pretty much ready for one more cure until one for one stick trades. So after the first guy was taken care of, the second guy finally cured, and he ended up with 26 emerald trades, which might be off, but to be honest, I don't really know, because I kind of lost track of which of the two zombies in this boat were which, because every time one of them cured, they would drop that piece of fence that they were holding, and the other one would pick it up, and to be honest, I have no clue who had it first. So maybe this trade was bad, but there is still hope. Maybe the trade was, you know, 
worth something. But for now, that didn't matter because on day 151, I ran straight into the nether, ready to go on a looting expedition. And upon getting to the other side, I placed down my lodestone and I connected my compass to it. And while I was here, I placed down my anvil and I named it Nether Spawn. And now that I had this compass, I could find my way back to the portal, no matter which way or how far I was. So now that I was 100% prepared, I set out to begin my search for gold. I began by flying around my nearby spawn to find areas that I hadn't picked clean yet, and I stumbled upon this nice little ravine that was full of gold ore and a ton of clusters of nether quartz. Overall, I was only down here for a couple of minutes, but by the time I ended up leaving, I had found myself 43 free gold already, which was the equivalent of five golden apples, which was good, but was very far from what I was going to need for these massive stonks. So I donned my RGB gaming wings, which you can't really buy online, but you could get the next best thing, which is my merch at paynomination.shop. <clears throat> Anyways, shameless plug over, I took flight for the first time so I could look around my nether spawn. And because it was all mostly just soul sand, there wasn't really much gold, but I did find myself a nice abandoned portal to rob of their gold chicken McNuggets in a free block of gold. Now after getting that free gold, I set back off looking for a good area to get some more gold or hopefully a bastion that I could rob. That is until I found this small netherrack area with some pretty good gold coverage. I sat here mining all of the gold and some of the nether quartz while also farming some juicy gas kills, which always seem to drop their loot into lava. Which means I'm probably not going to be resummoning the ender dragon anytime soon. But that was okay because after spending the rest of the day mining, I ended up with a little over a stack and I was once again visited by yet another step ghast. Man, the nether is really a wild place. On day 152, I set back out in search of more gold and the first thing I encountered was yet another step ghast. Except this time this guy was stuck in the ground and I made quick work of him and he dropped me no gas tears. What a guy. After killing Stepgast, I continued flying around in the hopes of finding a Bastion. But instead, I stumbled upon yet another abandoned portal, and this time there were some free iron nuggies and two gold blocks, which I will never complain about. I also managed to collect all of the gold in this area, and I fought this piglin over the loot where I hit every single shot, and I didn't miss a single time. I never miss my bow shots, ever. Overall, this new area that I had landed in was absolutely cracked with free gold. Plus, while I was here, I got to mine out this massive chunk of magma blocks that I could use in the future for some cool automatic farms at my base. I'm looking at you, mob farm. For day 153, after leaving the crazy gold mine, I found myself flying through a warped forest. And sure, there was gold here, but most of it was kind of too much effort to get, so I was going to keep flying by until I saw my first bastion. So I landed nearby and I quickly swapped my chest piece because you should always do that when you land even if you're not playing hardcore because I see so many people online dying stupid ways because they don't switch off their elytras. Okay, rant over, I swear. Anyways, after that small rant, I went to check out what kind of loot there was to borrow here and that's when I was greeted by the first of their piglin brute leaders. And even though this guy was a damage sponge, I easily made quick work of him and I stole the loot out of the nearby chest that had a free gold block in an efficiency 3 diamond pickaxe. Which overall wasn't that good, but honestly, loot is loot, and I like loot. After this, I kept exploring around this, and it ended up being one of those crummy broken bastions that didn't really have much loot, but just in case, I dug up to the top to see if there was an OP chest room full of death, and instead I found a tiny hidden little chest with a diamond shovel and some other random loot inside. So I ran back down and I began exploring the lower floors, if you could call them that, and there only ended up being about four more chests that mostly had mediocre or garbage loot inside. That is, until I found this one chest on the very bottom floor that had one gold block, a golden apple, and an iron block, which, if you think about it, still isn't that good in comparison to other bastions, but you know what, I guess next year I will not be trick-or-treating here again. Overall, I ended up being here until the end of day 154. On day 155, I left the bastion in search of, you guessed it, more gold to fuel my villager torturing needs. And after a short flight, I quickly found myself in prime gold real estate. This stuff was everywhere. In fact, there was so much stuff that I actually gave up on collecting any of the quartz or else I was going to be here for the entire 100 days. This was going to become 100 days of mining in the nether. And at this point, it just might end up being that anyways, because for the next three days straight, 
I explored around this area and non-stop mined tons of gold. I even got this crazy mid-flight snipe on a ghast where I was able to fly through his drops before they hit the lava and you would totally be seeing that right now if I was recording it when it happened. Good job me. But anyways after cleaning out enough of the gold and flying further in the nether on day 158 I stumbled upon another nether fortress and this one was perfect because it was in the middle of a lava ocean with soul sand valleys around it. So this place was perfect territory for wither skull hunting. But for some reason, my game was lagging awfully here. And even when the frame rate went back up above 60, the tick speed was still very far behind. And it made hunting here an awful experience. However, that did not stop me from playing Fruit Ninja with all of the wither skeletons with zero luck for skulls. But that was okay because next door there was another ruined portal that had some more free gold. And more importantly, in the distance was a giant bastion with an OP double chest in sight. Tomorrow was going to be a good day. So on the next day, day 159, I donned my RGB gaming wings yet again, and I flew over to the abandoned portal that didn't really have much loot, but there was free gold, and you know what? Free gold is free gold. And if you think about it, that's what I was here for at the end of the day. Anyways, now that I was done here, it was on to this beast of a bastion. And let me tell you, this place was perfect. It was one of those bastions that had a super out in the open loot room with a ledge nearby that I could use to pick off all of the bad boys. So I could go in there scot-free and borrow things with ease. And that is exactly what I did. I sat here dragging these bow shots, see what I did there, all over their faces until the area was nice and safe. And now that it was, I built myself over with netherrack to take my winnings. And the top two chests were kind of underwhelming to say the least. I ended up with one ancient debris, two gold blocks, and some other random subpar stuff, including an iron looting three sword, which was kind of insulting to be honest. I continued exploring through this bastion, and I wasn't really finding much in this first tower area, but I did get this nasty looking kill on this sus brute. So after finishing the first tower, I made my way over to the center area, and it turned out this was one of the bastions that had nether wart in the center area, which was a major throwback on this channel. If you've been here since the very first 100 days video, then you probably remember this was how I got nether wart in my OG hardcore world, because for the life of me, I could not find a nether fortress anywhere in that world. So yeah, let me know in the comments if you've been here for that long and if you remember that. Because that was, that was like the beginning of this year. That was like in March, which is crazy. Also, maybe leave some other crazy things in the comments down below that had happened in that OG world just as like a good throwback because honestly, I miss that world so much. Like, do you guys remember how I drank away my invisibility potion when I was making that guardian farm and I got my first totem of undying popped and I almost lost the entire world because I drank away my invisibility with milk to get rid of mining fatigue because I didn't kill the guardian elders before building the guardian farm. Good times, good times. Let me know in the comments below. I really want to see those comments. Anyways, with that little rant out of the way, I executed the remaining peeps here and there was about four more chests for me to loot that had some decent stuff inside. I ended up finding some more gold and iron some ancient debris, some nether scrap, a soul speed three book that is kind of useless in this world if you think about it, and this crazy chest that had nine freaking obsidian inside. So it was safe to say this journey was pretty successful. And at this point, I probably had enough gold to hold me over, so I was done in the nether. However, I was this far from my portal and I had an idea. So I flew back to the nearby abandoned portal to steal some more obsidian so I could make myself a full nether portal on the nether fortress just to see if it made a sky platform like it does in regular Minecraft. Because honestly, that would be super useful for making additional islands in the future. So I constructed this portal and I was trying to get a blaze to shoot it to light it up because I was too lazy to place a shulker. However, they refused to shoot anything but me apparently. And honestly, I don't really blame them. So I found the shulker and I grabbed my flint and steel and just before I lit the portal, a blaze shot it and lit it up. Honestly, I never knew that blazes could be so childish. But with that aside, it was time to test out my new theory. So I put my elytra on just in case this didn't work out and I went through the portal and I mean, it works, but I had no clue which way was home because I never placed a lodestone at my base. Honestly, I should have done that instead. Would have been much bigger brain. And I know what you're thinking. You could just use a regular compass to go back to spawn since one block is at spawn. And that would be a great idea if I had redstone or a regular compass on me. 
but I didn't, so that was not really an option. So on day 161, I set off on another journey to follow the compass home through the nether. And if you know anything about flying through the nether, sometimes it really sucks. I kept running into dead end after dead end after dead end after dead end. Yeah, there's a lot of dead ends. And to make any progress towards my compass direction, I had to go way out of my way until I found a third nether fortress. And if you know me, I couldn't not stop here, honestly. So I landed in, switched to my chess piece, and I began exploring. And this place was made of pure profit. There were tons of chests, and the very first one that I opened had two voluptuous diamonds inside. Bet you didn't think you were going to hear that today. Anyways, I know I say this every time, but this fortress was god tier. If this fortress was a monster from the anime reincarnated as a slime, it would be a disaster rank. Because there were literally wither skeletons everywhere. So I made one of the most massive brain plays ever, and I took the looting three iron sword that I got from the bastion, and I used my anvil to repair it with some iron. And let me tell you, this was such a good play, because things were all uphill from here. At first, while hunting different wither skeletons, not much was dropping until I had gotten my very first skull. And it was safe to say, I was very excited. But things were going to get even better from here, because literally two skeletons later, I had gotten back to back wither skull drops. And I was now fully prepared to fight the first ever wither in this world, which was crazy because I didn't expect to come here at all with wither skulls. This place was insane. Cracked, some would even say. So of course, I had to keep hunting because I am the best at not being distracted ever in Minecraft, and also apparently the best at finding perfect nether fortresses in my one block world because not long after that third skull i had a fourth one drop while i was dodging this big lava chungus overall this place was absolutely insane and i was here until the end of day 164 when i ended up in the middle of this absolute war above the nether fortress there were blazes shooting me from all directions there were ghasts b-52 bombing me from above there were zombie piglins constantly getting in the way of shots and almost making my life a lot harder and even some more wither skeletons that didn't really end up dropping much overall from this battle i ended up with five fresh wither skulls exactly 69 coal which was hilarious and my looting three sword was just barely holding on. These days were good days. On day 165, while trying to leave, a whole horde of wither skeletons spawned in near me, and I couldn't resist. So I struggled my way through my pile of shulkers to find the anvil. And I once again placed it down and repaired my sword just in time for them all to despawn. So I figured I would make a deal with myself. I'll hunt any withers that I see while trying to find the exit, but once I find the exit, I was out of there. I was going to leave. And to be honest, this place was huge and confusing, so I didn't really find the exit that quickly. But do you know what I did find? If you guessed a sixth Wither Skull drop, then you would be right. And honestly, this place ended up being more efficient than both of the first Nether Fortresses that I found in this world combined. Which kind of explains why there were also a ton of blazes and magma cubes spawning everywhere. This place was literally heaven in hell. But it was finally time for me to leave. So once I found an exit, I quickly took flight so I could move on to better things. Like, you know, actually working on my base. Or at least that's what I thought I was going to do because I ran into yet another super exposed nether fortress. However, this place kind of sucked. There were no wither skeletons and hardly any chests. I mean, minus from this one super good chest that had three diamonds inside, which are always good. I mean, because, like, how else was I going to get diamonds in this world, to be honest, besides mining that stupid one block? But, yeah, besides that, there wasn't really much here. So, after I finished looting the disappointing place, I continued flying towards home. That is, until I hit another dead end, and I had to turn around, flying right back over this place. And this time, there was the mother load of wither skeletons. This place was covered in them. So I did a very small brain gamer move, and I landed directly in the middle of them, and I struggled not to get hit while switching to my chess piece. But overall, things were still pretty good, because I ate a golden apple to appease those beyond annoying blazes, and I control alt deleted each and every wither skeleton, with no more skulls to show for it. On day 166, I was finally ready to head home, and this time, I meant it. No more distractions, no more wither skeletons. 
so I ignored the piles of skeletons that were continuing to spawn next to me, and I began the long and confusing ride home. I kept going in the opposite direction of the compass until this started to look familiar, and it turns out that I was not that far from home at all. I just had to go in a massive circle to find my way. But there it was, finally, my nether fortress that was by my base, and my super sketchy bridge that was made of tons of different blocks that did not belong in the nether. It was safe to say I was home. So I landed down near my portal and I went through, and the very first thing I did was lay out all of of my shulkers so I could see and count everything that I had gotten from this massive trip. Which ended up being quite a lot. I grabbed all of the gold from each shulker and I laid them out in my inventory to count them up and I ended up with just short of 10 stacks of gold, which was perfect because my goal was enough for one stack of golden apples, which only ended up being eight. So overall, this trip was a mega success, and I spent the rest of this night using blast furnaces to smelt most of the gold, and I begun organizing all of this loot. On day 167, I started off the day by using my last potion of weakness that I had to cure both of the boys, and I waited here for them to turn back into villagers, because I was pretty sure that the one guy on the right was going to have his one-for-one -one trades today. And boy do these guys know how to stomp my hopes and dreams into the earth. The left one cured first, and he still had 26 stick trades, which sucks, but at least I didn't really have much hope for him in the first place. And then it happened. My right villager cured, and his trades were now also up to 26 emeralds! What was going on? It was like my villagers were all cursed in this one block world. So, I walked away sad, not knowing what to do. And I kind of just spent the rest of this day finishing smelting stuff in those furnaces, and cleaning out all of my new loot as well as the random dump chests that I've been way too lazy to clean up that have been sitting here, you know, since the first hundred days. So it was safe to say that you could call today Spring Cleaning Day. Plus, while I was at it, I also made another piece of netherite that I would waste by putting into its item frame. Honestly, the things I do for organization. Anyways, now that I was back for my nether expedition and all of the loot and random dump chests were clean, it was back to finishing the roof of the trading hall, and there wasn't really much left to do. So I spent the next two days, days 168 through 169, nice, adding different windows and skylights to the back section of the trading stalls and waiting for the rest of my glass to smelt while also filling in the remaining side windows and the giant sunroof windows in the center room. Kinda weird take here, but this place kind of reminds me of one of those food courts inside of some dying mall that just, like, you know the ones that have tons of sunroofs and a very bright and colorful food court with, like, the one or two stores that are actually open? I don't know, let me know in the comments what you think. That's just my take. Anyways, by the time the sun was rising, this place now had a full roof and was mostly complete, minus whatever decorations I would decide to add to the inside in the future. So I took a quick flight overhead to see just how well it turned out and honestly this place ended up looking way way better than I thought it would and if you're thinking it was overkill I mean yes it, it was overkill it was it was more overkill than the trading hall that I built in my super flat world which was pretty insane for day 170 I was hopeful that my villagers were going to start cooperating but literally everything that could went wrong. I began the day by brewing more potions of weakness because I had ran out, and while I was waiting in between brews, I cured both of my zombie friends once more, and after I finished brewing my potions, I just kind of sat here babysitting them until the guy on the right cured with a whopping 26 emerald stick trade. Great. So at this point, I didn't really know what to do, so I killed a zombie, and I tried to break the boat to let him out, and for some reason, I accidentally hit him somehow. So I did some quick capitalism with the guy to make up for it, and I re-trapped him inside of the boat, and I just kind of sat here sad, waiting for the second guy to cure to see if his trades were at least a little better. And big surprise, once curing, his trades were just as scammy. They did not move at all. So I broke their boat so I could separate him from the zombie, and I somehow hit both of them, which makes literally zero sense. 
So after getting them out, I trapped the zombie in the boat, and I trapped the other guy inside of this glass prison, and I called it a day because things were just not going my way. On day 171, I woke up feeling pretty defeated, but I was not going to let a couple of wimpy villagers with some scam trades win. Hell no. So the first thing I did was pay them another visit, and this time I meant business. I placed down a boat for the mending villager so I could begin transporting all of my librarians to what I would like to call the Grand Librarian. Librarian's wing. So I boated this guy all the way there and upon arriving at his destination, I ran into a couple of problems that I thought about while I was building this place. And the biggest problem was going to be getting each villager into their one block cubby space. So I tried a couple of things out. I first tried wedging his boat inside, but the second I ended up freeing him, he fled for his life, which honestly, I don't really understand because this was the opportunity of a lifetime for him, literally. So after catching him in a boat again, I thought of the next and probably more efficient way to do this, which was good old fashioned minecarts. So I gathered some iron from my chest and I crafted 16 iron rails in a cozy looking minecart that was going to become my brand new best friend and probably these villagers worst enemy. After this, I placed down some rails that was going to lead him into his brand new home and I pushed the minecart past his boat which plopped him exactly where I needed him to be with ease. That is, minus the whole process of getting the minecart back, yeah that kinda sucked, but after doing this more I will definitely work out the kinks. Either way, this was a mission success because my mending friend was now in his new forever home. So I spent the rest of this day doing the exact same thing with the rest of his friends. The second guy gave me some more trouble, but after that I had it down to a science and the two others went in with ease and by the time it was night they were all in their collective spaces. On day 172, essentially it was more of day 171. I started out by ruining my new central room by building a two block high area for me to continue transforming villagers into zombies without the fear of iron golems yeeting them into oblivion. And one by one I delivered each of my fletchers from that weird room in my base that I still don't know what to call including the zombie boy who I quickly turned just to see what his trades would be and they were still 26 emeralds. Nice. Anyways, now that all of the Avengers were assembled here, I made another small dark room nearby in the hopes of spawning some zombies where the golems couldn't RKO them. And after this, I spent the entire night running back and forth while emptying out the mob farm, trying to get zombies to spawn in. And at first, I wasn't really having any luck, but after enough tries, zombies began pouring out. And by the time the sun was coming up, I had all of these guys inside of boats, infected and chilling, minus the one guy in the back corner. So on day 173, I continued clearing out my mob farm and checking for more spawn zombies and after the first try I walked in on two skeletons, one creeper, which I was not ready for. So I sniped these three out of my plane of existence and I went back to the routine. Smack mobs, get XP, run far away, check for zombies. Smack mobs, get XP, run far away, check for zombies. And honestly, I know I've said this before, but skyblock mob farms are just so satisfying. When I finally do get to upgrade this one, I might end up making it into a hybrid so that way I don't miss out on these crispy multi kills. Anyways, I went back to check for zombies, and there is finally a baby zombie, which is kind of funny because I've never actually infected villagers with a Philza zombie before. So, I mean, why not give it a shot? And just like that, all of my Fletchers were now ready to start their brand new group torture experiment. I mean, field trip. It's a field trip. Think of this as some nice magic school bus styled field trip to the afterlife and back. Well, let's 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 go with that. Let's go with that. That's good. Anywho, since I haven't checked on any of the farms in like years, I thought today would be a good day to do that. So I paid a visit to my lonely wheat field with my fortune three axe to maximize my yield because I mean, what else was I going to use that fortune for? Let's let's be honest. And of course, after doing this, I replanted all of the seeds because I might be mean to my villagers, but I will not be mean to my fields because I mean, how else could I eat that wheat? So after I finished up my field, I dumped all of the seeds and the wheat into a nearby chest and I went on to collecting all of the sugarcane because books are still pretty useful for villager trades since I didn't really have infinite emeralds yet. And after finishing up the sugarcane, I took on the massive task of clearing out all of my bamboo farm with my diamond sword and boy did Hinokami Kagura take a beating. After finishing off the bamboo farm, I crafted everything into sticks and I ended up with almost 34 stacks of these profitable boys and my sword was all the way down into the yellow which was basically meaningless to me because I had a crazy XP mob farm. But on day 174, instead of mending my sword, I had a much better plan. I grabbed some emeralds from my building dump chest and I 
traded for a brand new sharpness 5 book because today I was finally going to upgrade my sword. So I grabbed two diamonds from my diamond chest for the new sword, I crafted it, and I brought some lapis lazuli, that is how it's pronounced, 100%, and a grindstone over to my enchantment table so I could begin rolling for looting 3. And at first my rolls were complete doo-doo butter until I had the perfect roll, unbreaking 3 and looting 3, which were exactly what I needed. So I ran over to my anvil all excited to never have to deal with knockback ever again and I added sharpness 5 in mending to this boy and I once again named it the new Hinokami Kagura because honestly that old one is trash. I threw it down on the ground and I spit on it. Anyways now that my god sword had finally been forged I took it out for a test whack at the mob farm and I mean I couldn't really see the difference but boy did I feel the difference. So in celebration of my new sword I grabbed all of my remaining apples and I crafted them into a spicy 40 golden apples for the mass curing that was about to begin. And after this I yeeted two potions of weakness at all of my zombie friends and I then stuffed their faces full of golden apples. I really hope this ends up working or I am going to be out a lot of golden apples. On day 175 I waited around for all of these boys to begin curing and I finally have good news. One by one as each of these dudes cured their trades were finally actually going down. So I traded a bunch of sticks and string that I had in my inventory so I could level them up while also supplementing my struggling emerald count before leaving them all to continue their torment. And while they were suffering, I also ended up doing the same. Or at least I would have if I didn't have the good old fashioned keyboard macros. Because I sat here in the auto stone generator for most of the day just whacking away at stone for my next building project because my animals were in desperate need of homes. Especially good old Pablo the polar bear because I got a lot of comments in the last video about Pablo. And if you guys keep that up in this video, I will also go through and heart any Pablo comments that I see because it amuses me, not gonna lie. Anyways, after gathering enough stone for the day, I went back to check on and cure the boys again, and this iron golem was trying to crack open a cold one with them, but that was not happening on my watch, so I smelted him with a bucket of lava, and I went back to waiting for the villagers to cure. And for some reason, moving them did the trick because all of their trades were getting better and better. So to hold me off with trading for now, I gave them as many sticks as I could for some juicy emeralds, and I was almost at two stacks now, which was small, but definitely a good start. On day 176, I went over to my potions of weakness chest so I could cure the zombie villagers again, and I ended up running out of brown mushrooms to make more fermented spider eyes. And it just so happens to be I was down to my last potion. So I threw that potion at the group of four zombies, unfortunately leaving out the fifth one because of how I placed them, and I fed them all more Gucci apples. And now that they were all set to go, I grabbed my nether compass and I headed back into the nether to hunt me down some brown mushrooms, which turns out were right in front of my portal the entire time, along with the surprise gas that tried to blow it up. However, I was on my Mario Tennis A game with my blocks before I trick shot him out of existence. So overall, this was a good hunt I would say because I ended up with no more gas tears for my effort and 10 new brown mushrooms that I planned on farming for infinite more this time. So I took my prize from the great mushroom journey and I traveled back home and while going back to brew more potions, I ended up finding three more or just chilling in the brewing stand. But you know what? I still need these in the long run, so it works out in the end. And boy, did it work out, because while I was waiting for my potions to brew, I went to check on my villager trades after their latest cure, and they were now so close to perfection, because two of their trades were at two sticks per emerald, and the other two were down to seven, which hopefully means after the next cure, they will all be ready to be exploited, tra traded with, traded with. Either way, today was a massive success, and I spent the rest of my night just kind of brewing more potions, and checking on the boys' infections, and one by one, curing each of them the final time before they had gotten the god tier one for one emerald trades. And as I cured each and every one for the final time, I also whacked each of the zombies out of the boats so I could no longer have to deal with that the next day. On day 177, I cured the final villager for the last time, and I killed off his zombies, so we were now ready to move all of these dudes into what I like to call the Hall of Capitalism. So I one by one both them each over and I put them into their respective cubbies by using the minecart trick which ended up giving me very few issues minus this one guy escaping and this final one refusing to work but long story short I had gotten all five of them into place 
and it was time for some maximum efficiency capitalism. I traded with each of these guys for the max of 16 sticks that they could do at a time, and because the last guy was having a coming back to life crisis, I only ended up profiting a solid stack of emeralds, which was still safe to say that things were all up from here. So in celebration, I spent the rest of the night whacking away at more mobs in the mob grinder to repair Choppy Toppy and my RGB gaming wings since they were still pretty damaged from that trip to the nether. And after I finished repairing all of my tools and gear, I ended off the night by feeding tons of wheat to my still submissive and very breedable cows, mushrooms, and sheep. And this was really, really loud footage. Rip my editor's ears. On day 78, I woke up with big plans on the horizon because today I was going to start my new stone brick path for my next building project. So I grabbed myself a bucket of lava because first I had to clear away the old villager breeder, which meant first burning this iron golem who dropped his iron off of the side of the platform like an absolute chad. But that was okay because I did the exact same thing to his two friends here, and no, I don't want to see any 07s in the comments for them because these guys had it coming. Anyways, I went over to commence in some beautiful capitalism for the day before working on my stone project and boy does this bring back memories of my villager trading hall and my OG hardcore world because these dudes were producing mad stonks. After only trading for a minute, I walked away here with just shy of three stacks of emeralds. And now that my pockets were thicker than a Pixar mom and the traders were working on refreshing their trades, I began clearing out the frame of the old villager breeder because I was tired of seeing it and it was in my way. And after every fence and stone wall was gone, I filled in the section of dirt near my base and I filled in the rest with more stone bricks for my next building project. And of course, I had no torches on me and by the time I got back with some, the three musketeers skeletons were waiting to surprise me but little did they know i had a bone to pick with them get it if you do i'm sorry it's a bad joke on day 179 after building part of my stone platform i started to struggle with what i wanted to build i wanted to put a horse stable over in this area but i don't quite know how much space i wanted to have here in the future so for this day while i was lost in thought i began touching up the areas that i already had i began by replacing the edges of my paths with some spruce wood planks to act as an accent that matched all of my buildings and I finally finally began replacing the super bright and ugly oak slab floors with some more classy stone bricks and don't get me wrong oak wood looks nice just not like this Anyways, after working on some of the floors, I had some huge inspiration for what I wanted the field by my house to look like. So I crafted some barrels and stone brick fence that I then placed around the perimeter while also adding some spruce slabs on top of them, and I had an idea for the perfect accents. For each of the corner barrels, I added spruce fence that I turned into a small lamp post that ended up having hanging lanterns on it, overall to light up the area more, make it look a little more full, and make it look more classy. And of course, while doing this, I quickly ran out of those lanterns but it's all good because I went back to my super helpful mending villager friend to buy a whole bunch more. Overall this day ended up being a mixed bag for me. I was kind of unsuccessful because I stood around for half the day and towards the end I was very successful because by the time the sun came up the whole perimeter had been done and it looked really good. On day 180 now that the perimeter around this small nature area was complete I knew exactly what I wanted to put in the middle. However, this was not going to be easy because it required me to go down several layers under what was already here. So I started by digging out an outline for the small little project in the dirt and I used a bucket of water to place some cobblestone underneath. And after getting down there, I painstakingly built a bottom area out of this hole that I made out of cobble and cobble slabs. And if you haven't guessed it already, I was going to turn this into a small pond. So after finishing the bottom layers, I began adding bits of sand around each of the sides, which also turned out to be a pain in the butt, no pun intended, because each piece of sand needed to have a block underneath so it would not fall into the abyss. However, by the time I had used up all of my daylight, this whole thing was set up and ready to go, and that's where the troubles began, because filling this place with water ended up being an awful experience because I could not get any of the water to become still for the life of me. In fact, I had to do this whole thing the hard way by placing blocks underwater and re-breaking them to update each tile of water. But by the time it was the middle of the next day, day 181, I had finally finished the water and my four new fish friends from random mystery chests seemed to be digging it. However, I wasn't finished yet. I went over to my mending trader to buy three more name tags and I took all four of the name tags that I had so I could begin naming my fish so they wouldn't despawn, even 
if they could, which to be honest, I don't really know. But either way, I came up with four perfect names for these dudes, which were oddly shark themed, even though I have no clue why, because they were fish. Doesn't matter though. I decided to name them Sharpedo, Baby Shark, Kasame and Gargura. And if you get any of those references, I mean, some of them are pretty obvious, but leave comments down below. Anyways, after getting the name tags, I jumped in the water to name each and every one of them. And after that, I spent the rest of the day adding stones around the pond, a nice little waterfall. I added some sugarcane here and there. I planted another tree and I went around planting tons of grass to finish it off. And overall, this nature area added exactly the perfect touch that I was going for here. This gross, flat, bland world was becoming a real place with actual living nature. On day 182, I wanted to continue my streak of cleaning things up near the villager trading hall. So I first started out by adding another fence of barrels and some stone brick fences to the opposite side of the first ones, except I left a gap in the center, which was going to be the new center area for my stone farm because I was going to move it because it looked like an eyesore. So I began laying out the front entrance to what would be the new stone generator until I ran out of room because of the old one. So I grabbed some buckets to steal all four of the water sources and I stole the lava off the top and after that I made quick work of tearing down the entire thing and I rebuilt it exactly how it was but with nicer blocks this time. No more gross mossy staircases. Ew. Slimy. Bad. But anyways after the new stone farm was built I broke the old remaining fenced in area that was built with mismatched blocks and I filled in the surrounding area with the remaining dirt that I had for another cool nature area. And to finish this whole part off, I added more lamps to the side and I filled in the grass blocks with trees and other plants so that way there was no more empty space. And while taking a quick flight over top of my elytra, I was super happy with how this place turned out. And honestly, I hope you all like it too because it's really, really hard for me to describe some of these things that I build without always saying the same things. Like, I'm like, oh, I think it looks good. Oh, I don't think it looks good. Oh, this looks cool. That looks cool. I don't know how to describe the things that I build. I struggle. So if you do like the commentary on that, I really, really hope you guys do. L leave a comment below. It let me, let me know, because I damn my self-conscious. Wow. Anyways, for the next two days, days 183 through 184, I was finally prepared to build my small horse pen so I could actually start using the horses, even though this was a two inches by two inch world. Totally going to use them. Not going to leave them sit there, I swear. So I started off the day by replanting more spruce trees and flying to the top to chop them all the way down because I needed more wood after building the entire villager trading hall because I am wood poor. So after gathering enough wood, I placed down a crafting bench and a dump chest nearby so I could go ham on building this stable because I knew exactly the design idea that I had in my head. I began by placing more barrels that would work as the bottom part of the fence post that would hold this entire place up. And after that, I spent until the end of day 184 working on the three individual horse stalls in the center. And after that, I added myself a roof on top and I went around detailing all the individual areas, including the inside areas, the sides. I put some proper lantern lighting so no mobs would spawn. And by the time the sun was rising, this place was finished and ready to go. And the more stuff I build over here, the more comfy and roomy this place really just starts feeling. In comparison to the first 100 days, this place has really glown up. On day 185, in celebration of my new horse stable, I went back to the stick hall for some more juicy capitalism with the boys. I traded sticks with all five of the villagers and ended up with a stack and 16 emeralds plus all of my tools were now mended fresh by the juicy XP. And now that I had the emeralds I bought three more name tags from the mending villager and I went back to my base to gather some saddles, I gathered some horse armor, and I grabbed another anvil because naming those fish broke the last one. Anyways, now that I had everything that I needed, I headed over to my horses so I could begin putting them in the stable. And the first horse that I jumped on was an absolute beast. Just look at this guy's health. This horse was like a boss horse because he was more stubborn than the amount of health that he had. But once I finally befriended him, I gave him a saddle and some diamond horse armor and I rode him over to the first stall of the new horse pen. And while I was over here, I came up with the perfect name on the spot. I named her Shaltir because she was a powerful horse. Also, let me know down below which anime that's from, by the way. I know I keep asking you guys for comments because I've referenced a lot of things this episode. I'm sorry, okay? But anyways, after naming the first horse, I went back to get the second white one. And this one was also crazy strong, but for some reason, super buggy because the horse wouldn't kick me off and it didn't want to be my friend. 
So I just kind of sat here until I finally got it to work and I gave her some armor. After that I took her back to the diamond pen and this time I named her Albedo, which is also another super strong character from that very same anime. And now that I had the two white horses in their pen, I went back and gathered the skeleton horse and I grabbed the zombie horse and I named both of them Madara and Aizen because both of them gave off massive antagonist vibes. For days 186 through 187, I began building a path that continued out beyond where the old villager breeder was so I could begin construction of my brand new iron golem farm. And not gonna lie here, while recording these two days, my power actually went out and I lost all of the footage of me gathering the supplies for this build and actually starting the collection area and the kill chamber. But yeah, this is, this is what it looks like so far. Thank you, Florida, for that. Anyways, the way this setup works is there is a sorter that will take all of the flowers into this back area and the rest of the chests will end up having the mad stonk piles of iron that will go from the iron golems. However, at this point, I was running very low on iron and I needed eight more hoppers to finish off this collection area, which, yes, I know, is very ironic. I needed more iron to build an iron farm. Who would have guessed? So on day 188, I was out on a journey for some iron. I began picking off any of the iron golems that were just kind of hanging around, but of course, now that I actually wanted them, they were nowhere to be found. I even checked on top of my giant house roof and nothing was up here, which is whack, because these guys have been hanging out up there in the background of every single clip I've been recording for these entire 100 days. But unfortunately, since my place was now super safe and there was no more villagers in it, it was just not spawning iron golems anymore. So I went over to my villager trading hall and I melted two of them and after that I ended up finding this guy in the top floor inside of my house and I drug him outside by using a lead and um we won't talk about what happened after that and after all of that grinding I didn't end up with much so I began checking any of the chests around my base for more spare iron including my mob farm which actually had four overall I was only able to make five of the eight hoppers that I needed today but I still placed them inside of the floor of the killing chamber before going back to my villager hall in search of more golems and while I was here I checked on my villagers who now had two stick trades which was not okay not in my house so I grabbed more sticks to do some more capitalism with them and some of them reverted back to one stick trades so it looks like this might just be a false alarm but it also looks like I might have to give them a talking to in the future either way I spent the rest of the night waiting for golems to spawn in the villager breeder while using the patch dirt in the crops to my advantage when melting them with lava good times except for some reason they stopped spawning until the morning of day 189 when I mercilessly melted this final golem for the hopefully last bit of iron that I was going to get this way ever again in this world. And now that I had it, I crafted the three hoppers that I needed and I placed them in the chamber and I began filling in the edges with glass, stone bricks, and glowstone so when these guys melt, the whole world can see exactly who not to mess with. After finishing the walls of the chamber, I then crafted nine crimson signs that would act as the stopping point for the lava blade because fun fact, nether woods are fireproof, just like me when it comes to burns in the comment section. Anyways, after adding the lava blade, I built out the lower collection platform that would push all of the golems that fall from the upper spawn chambers into the fiery depths of the center. And this process took most of the night until I was interrupted by a wandering trader that refused to have dark oak wood because apparently I was cursed. So I took my anger out on him by yeeting him off the edge. The nerve of these dang kids on my lawn, I swear. On day 190, now that the collection area was built out, I grabbed all of my buckets of water and I made myself an infinite water source so I didn't have to keep going back and forth while I struggled to get all of the water currents flowing into the center without any stagnant spots that the iron golems could get stuck in. In this process, was kind of a pain, but I did quickly get it figured out so I could move on. And after this, I spent the next three days building four 10 by 10 square areas that I filled with more water to push the iron golems that spawn inside of them down into the lower gathering chamber. I also added more fence gates to each of the areas where they would fall and I added slabs around the walls so no golems could spawn up here and slow down the farm because I speak from experience there, trust me. If they can spawn somewhere, they will especially in a one block world. On day 194, after finishing the four areas for the villagers that were in between the four golem spawning areas, I flew over to my overcrowded sheep pen to make them all nakey. I mean, get wool for villager beds. That's what I mean. And after getting the wool that I needed, I flew back over to the iron golem farm and I began crafting beds for each section of the villagers. And by the time this place was done, there would be 20 villagers total here with a minecart square in the center that would spin around with a zombie, scaring all of the villagers. 
and you know the drill. The scared villagers will then talk to each other about how scared they are, and then they'll start popping out iron golems like rabbits. And now the only things left for me to do was deliver the villagers and the zombie here and make the slab roof after that that would stop extra golems from spawning on top. Which was going to be problematic to say the least because I was going to need a lot more iron to make a minecart track to deliver everyone here. So I spent most of the night hunting more golems until they stopped spawning but luckily I had enough to build the bare minimum amount of tracks that I would need. So I built some jank stone staircase all the way up to the top of the villager storing rooms and I added golden rails to push these boys at sonic speed. And now all I had to do was boat 20 villagers and a zombie over, which is super easy, right? I mean, yes, but this was very time consuming. And honestly, I wanted to have enough time to give Pablo the polar bear his own new habitat and see how much iron this thing would produce and then also go on to kill the wither. But at this point, it was looking like that wasn't really going to happen because this village delivery system took until the end of day 198. During this process, not everything went the right way. I mean, just look at this guy take my minecart boat into the abyss with him. Nice. I needed to get more iron after that one. On day 199, after getting all of the villagers into their torment chambers, it was now time for a zombie. And this was not going to be easy. So to prepare for it, I first bought a name tag for him and I named it Zabuza because this guy was going to be a killer. And at this point, I had two options. I could either build cover for the entire path so a zombie wouldn't burn during the daytime, or I could just wait until nighttime came, which would be much easier. So, I mean, that's exactly what I ended up doing. I built myself a small dark chamber right at the bottom of my ramp during the daytime, and I flew off to give enough space to hopefully spawn a zombie, and I kid you not, it was like the game had given me a break, because a zombie spawned on the top of the roof of my trading hall. So I slowly went through the process of luring this guy all the way over, and it was not easy, because he was pretty stupid, and that iron golem back there wanted to play ping pong with his face. But I finally did get him where he needed to be and I lured him into the minecart and up and away until he came flying right back down because I didn't adjust the track up at the top and this is where things got tricky. It took me a solid five minutes to finally get this guy up where he needed to be and at this point the sun was coming up so I had to hurry. I quickly built a roof of slabs over his track and I struggled to push him down while he almost burned alive or Undead, I guess. But either way, he was finally on the track, and all of his roof area was in place, and at this point, I hadn't even got him spinning yet, and this thing was already pumping out iron golems. So, I dropped down to his track to give him a quick push start, and after that, I flew out before he hit me like a boomerang, and now, my iron farm was officially in full swing. So at this point, it was now day 200, and I had just finished cleaning up the random blocks by the iron farm, and this thing had already produced me 52 iron in literally like two minutes of production. It was safe to say that my iron drought was now over, but there wasn't enough time for celebration because there were two more things left for me to do before these 100 days. The first thing I wanted to do was name and move Pablo the polar bear, and the second thing was kill those withers that I had gathered. So I began gathering the resources to make Pablo the home that he so well deserves. I grabbed some snow and a carved pumpkin, and I summoned a snow golem so I could farm the snow to give him a habitat that he wouldn't forget. Except the snow golem wasn't dropping any snow. And that's when I realized it. I was inside of a plains biome which meant that I could not get any snow from him at all here, so I could not farm snow. So I kind of just summoned this guy for nothing. But I mean, I guess that kind of works because he can keep Pablo company when I did get snow. And speaking of snow, snow I was going to get because we had already gotten this far in the world and I was not going to be stopped by something as stupid as a biome. So I concocted yet another massive brain idea. I gathered more snow and the pumpkin and I went into the end to test out if it worked here. And you bet it did. So I just kind of sat here farming snow for a good couple of minutes until I had a solid two and a half stacks of snow blocks. So I quickly hopped my way back to the end portal and I began placing the barrel and stone brick wall around Pablo's brand new home. And at that point it started raining which quickly struck down his new snow golem friend before they even had a chance to meet. Life is cruel. But like I said before, one block giveth and one block taketh away. Anyways, I quickly rushed throughout the night to fill this place in with snow and make it escape proof and also trying to decorate it, which was much harder than I had anticipated. I was trying to make a Christmas tree here with this tree and uh, yikes. 
But anyways, this place had still turned out pretty nice in the end. However, I had ran out of time because it was now day 201. But honestly, let's just keep this a little secret. I, I still kept playing just a little bit. I went over and bought three name tags for Pablo and the two llamas that are at spawn. So that way they could all be together. After that, I named Pablo Pablo. I mean... Duh. And I named the llamas Rem and Rom after the two that I had lost in my original hardcore world. And one by one, I escorted all three of them with leads into their brand new home. And don't worry, Pablo will not eat them. I googled it. I mean, I only took like a minute looking it up, but I mean, I guess we'll find out in 300 days. And that's the final chapter for this world. While I have you here, I just wanted to say thank you all for supporting me. It really means the world, and I hope you're excited for the next chapter in one block. One block? Lucky block. Anyways, thank you to all my patrons for going the extra mile to support me. I love you and I hope you enjoy this map along with the other maps and mods up on my Patreon. Anyways, this has been Pain Domination and I will see you in the next one. Peace.